Well, hello, you know what else will light up our faces? It's this PvP tea time, guys, look, okay? You guys say we're always talking about raids? Look, we, I, we've gone to the other extreme. Now we're not going to talk about anything that has an AI attached to it is off the menu, guys. We're not even going to talk about the beast. The beast is off the menu today, guys, okay? That's not allowed. The okay. beast? Yeah, yeah. oh. <laughs> it's so has cool. AI attached? Yeah, uh, that's true, actually. But it's minimized because uh, you eat the pet, right? But <laughs> Your stream just hosted Grimjack again. It, it, it does that. Just give it another refresh. Don't worry. It's it's a Twitch glitch. It's really annoying. <laughs> it's the auto. The auto host is a bit buggy right now. If you refresh, it will come back. No, 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 no. Look, okay, my yeah, intro was perfect back. there, guys. No, I'm not editing this out. Okay, this is staying in. Okay? No, don't worry. They, they said it as well, went back to host. Yeah, it, it's a Twitch glitch. Just refresh it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a stupid thing. I mean, there probably will be no. some AI discussion because there's like yeah. bots and stuff that yeah. are actually managing to get the platform. <laughs> that is Mirage. funny. Yeah, I like Mirage, that. by the way. Ah, yeah. No, Not only good. Scourges, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, Whoa. they're playing Mirages? I've seen Scourges only, mm. bots. But no, yeah. Mirage. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's, exe uh, except Georgia's uh, Mirage. Is that's about two. <laughs> hey, well, I sustained you for 120 well, seconds. That's, that's kind of interesting, I'm though. God, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, Wait, so. Are the bots playing only Scourge, or are they playing Mirage? No, I've only seen Scourge, but, yeah. Like two there's or like, three bots. There's legitimate bots that are playing the Starfax Torch build. Um, Cause I've seen them. That kind of, like, goes to show, like, how the Mesmer class has become so much more dumbed down. Like, you would never think that Mesmer, like, could be played by a bot, but if it's being played by bots now, that's, like, I think that's, you know, that's a pretty good place to kind of start off. You know, one of the reasons that prompted this tea time is, you know, and, and to talk about PvP in general is, you know, there have been a few videos, a bit of controversy about the place of, you know, a certain certain streamer. It's Georges, you know, maybe having a bit of a, a bit of a, well, the thing is, like, he was going into an in-depth uh, assessment of Mirage, right? Very in-depth, very analytical, okay? A review of the Mirage toolkit, and and I, I think if you you know the, the community was was enjoying this right and reacted to it in a certain way, and we we've had you know it sparked a few discussions, and I think the frustration there, which is what Val is kind of alluding to, is that there are some design choices in Path of Fire, uh, those the new elite specializations that are perhaps a little obnoxious, shall we say, uh, in the uh, the structured PvP game mode. Would you like to go ahead and kind of go off on that one then, uh, Jaw, to start us off then? Oh, you want, oh, you want yeah, me to take yeah, the lead on yeah. that? Yeah, Open uh, it up. Open it up. Literally putting me in the firing line right at the beginning. I Fantastic. Well, I mean, how do I start? Shit. Well, Mirage is busted. Um, no, now, honestly, I started that RAM video with no intention. I mean, actually, it, ha it happened on stream live. Live. So, it would be good enough for a YouTube video. Yeah, so I got a message. So Zodem High, he's one of my one of my like regulars. He was like, "Dude, that Mirage video or that that Mirage thing that happened on stream, you need to cut that and you need to put it on fucking YouTube." He said that was the funniest thing he'd ever watched, right? And I was like, I was like, really? It, it, it seemed like kind of like aggressive. I was like, do I really should I put that on YouTube? And he was like, Yeah, do it, do it, do it. I was like, Okay, whatever. It takes me like twenty minutes. So literally that evening after making the run. I went through, I made sure there wasn't going to be anything that was going to get me in trouble with arena net. I just like censored everything out. Even like some of the censoring isn't even offensive. Like I, I went over things and censored things that weren't bad just for like comedic effect, just to like make it seem like it, you know, I was really, really angry. Um, so it wasn't even my idea to put it on, uh, on YouTube in the first place, but then somebody posted on Reddit and gives it a load of exposure. And I was like, well, this wasn't really intended to even like go as big as it did. And then all of a sudden it's got like 8,000 views or some shit. And I'm thinking, fuck, now people actually think that I care about this shit that much. I've been ranting about Mirage for like the last year, right? Nobody's paid attention. But as soon as I make a fucking video where I just go through the tool tips and read out the skills, everyone's like, holy shit, Guild Wars 2 is in a meltdown. Jaw is an idiot. All this shit, like calling me a monkey. I, I got like a fucking 29 vi fucking minute video just like insulting me, <laughs> calling me a fucking retard. Like I haven't even watched the video. People are like just like linking me like uh, timestamps. Like listen to this guy insult you for the next 20 seconds. I'm like, Jesus, like I don't even know this guy. So obviously I'm tilted to fuck just because something that started off as a meme is now this like really big deal. So I make another video like saying, okay, well I, I think Mirage is kind of busted. Here's me dueling against Sindrana. Like, Sindrana Thief should be able to kill me on a Mirage. Like, 
really thinking about it. It doesn't really matter what he's playing. He's got like so much class knowledge on that class. I've got literally none on Mirage. There's no way that I sustain this for as long as I do. I put up two clips sustaining him for like over 80 seconds. One of them was even like 110 seconds, which is ridiculous, right? For one, considering I'm, I'm on Mirage, I got no wait, idea. Wait, wait, hold doing. the fucking phone, dude. You know what? that thieves don't really have good DPS, right? Like the video was kind of flawed, right? Ooh. Thieves are not good at 1v1ing. They're good at like finishing targets. So obviously, I, know, I, like, I agree. Isn't okay, that okay. Hard. Let's like, just if he doesn't class. kill you instantly, then yeah. After no, like the 30 second window, that, you're like, pretty safe. Other, I've Come. dueled other Mirages and I've done well. That's what he means. I, I have a video of dueling Misha, but that's an older build with better Thief build as well. So it's not can, the. Can we, can we just eliminate the class element of this and just compare me to Cinderna's level of play? Okay? Now, I'm pretty sure that he should kill me in pretty much any like any class where I have zero class knowledge and he's playing his main. It doesn't really seem to matter what I'm doing because I'm pretty sure he'll be able to outplay me. Nine times out of ten. Nine nine point nine times out of ten, okay? And I, I literally had picked up that class for maybe two or three minutes. Like, I, I, you know, two or three games, rather. And you, you I had a rough Mirage understanding before. of it. Yeah, you have played Mirage before. I played, I played the, yes, yeah, so I played the Sword Pistol build, and I played yeah. Axe Torch, so I played the Axe Torch Sword Pistol. I'd never played the Chaos line, I'd never played with Staff. And I only started playing the stuff. So. Well, I didn't know that I could get uh, lesser chaos on on uh, false oasis or like on heal use. I didn't. I had no idea about that. I didn't know about like auspicious anguish and how that worked. Obviously, I, I swapped to the uh, the bottom trait line, the bountiful or something or other. Like uh, anyway, like I, I was learning about these traits as I was changing them. So the fact that I mean, you're able to adapt and change like traits and stuff. And anyway, like thief is a direct counter to mirage. So my understanding it, it's like, sort of a counter to it, but it's not like hard counter. But. I don't know. I never really thought Thief was a counter to Staff Mirage. Ever, never. When when Misha was playing the Torch Axe sort of pistol, then it was fine. But as soon as he goes Staff, it's harder. Okay. All right then. Yeah. Especially Chaos with extra Chaos Storms. It's just they resist in so hard. Okay. Well, I, don't, like, I, if I mean, if, lands, if that's the case, then I don't really have anything to say because as far as I was concerned, Thief was a direct counter because it, it has like uh, plasma utility. It's got like evade. It has disengage. Like, you can just like dip set away from the shatters and come back in. Uh, I, that, was, that, was my, that, that was my perception. But I guess with staff, you've got too much sustainability for you to even be able to do anything. So. Yeah, and especially if, uh, depending on nodes, let's say forest on um, quarry, you can't, you can just jump up on boxes and you can't kill him. Well, that's yeah. sort of like the... The difference in playstyle between the um, the staff and like any other weapon set is that you can just mind game people. So yeah. it's actually like I like staff on Mesmer. I think it's way higher skill cap. Okay, so in that case, if we if we kind of take a, the, the balance question aside, then right? Because I mean, for for example, like George, would you say that mirage is overpowered right now at a high level right because we did see, no. it did see a lot of play in the monthly at of course but didn't win the monthly at the t it was it was a, it was the soul beast team that won of course right uh -huh. so if it's not overpowered then uh in that case surely it is a design issue right okay it comes down to like a, an unfun issue that playing against it simply isn't engaging and it's not enjoyable, and 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 I think that that is probably going to be a little bit of a of a of a theme, I suppose, of of I today's tea also, time. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Fuck maybe fuck. not just like um like that the build is bad, but it's not good in the meta because like Mirage is good at singling out targets, but like if you have a ton of su support from your teammates then, like, the, the Kani damage from Mirage is kind of, like, negated, right? So, like, a Zergi meta, Mirage is kind of, like, useless, right? But it's good in a meta where, like, solo key, where coordination is low, right? Which is the difference that we see here, right? It's not good in uh, ATs, but it is good in ranked Q, where you don't get support from your teammates. And and that is a really interesting thing to, to talk about, I think, because we I suppose we sort of saw a similar thing, actually, with Dragon Hunter, right, back in Heart of Thorns, that it was very, very dominant in, in kind of uh, ranked, specifically lower ratings as well. So Arena Net kind of chopped away at it uh, because it was causing problems there. So it, do, do you think it's worth balancing around, um, it was worth balancing around that, for, around ranked and solo queue as well as the 
competitive gameplay as well, or should it, or should the games balance solely be dictated by kind of the, the top? Top level play, right? Like, how, do, or do can you somehow get both of those considered within the, uh, the the kind of the the balance zone of, of Guild Wars Two? Like, what's the correct <laughs> approach here? Uh, so my opinion is that Mirage is busted in rank Q. It's easy to play uh, once you have a rough understanding of what your skills do. You have so much passive sustainability and passive damage application that you can pretty much kite around and kill anybody in a in a good period of time um and a 1v1 case you can even 1v2 i've been 1v2ing people now i've got a rough idea of what the class actually plays like in like um when i was playing off season and i play a little bit during uh the new season but it's just been released i've actually managed to get you know get my head around it and understand what that does in, in solo queue but when you actually look in the uh, ats you see that soul beast is way better as like a node sustain and because of the way the meta shapes in um, in terms of the 80s, so for example, you pretty much always have a Firebrand, you'll have a Scourge, you'll have a Revenant, a Thief, and then you have a Node Sustain. And your Node Sustain was uh, arguably a Mirage, um, in some cases where Flandry would be that role, for example, in, in uh, the Sakiki, uh, fucking, I can't remember exactly who's on the team, but the, the team that just won the MAT, um, they, they used to have the Mirage. And then Flandry actually swapped to Solbeast because Flandry realized that Solbeast out sustains mirage um in both like a 1v2 element and actually in the 1v1 element as well um but when you actually you know take a, a step back and you look in solo queue you'll see that mirages tend to win a lot of 1v1 matchups and it's because solo queue play requires you to effectively 1v9 right um and the ats are always like team based they're always like group play so when you when you go into solo queue, you'll see a lot of hollow smiths who have really really fast rotations with rocket boot build, like with static discharge. You see a lot of revenants who just want to like burst players out. You'll see a lot of mirages because mirages can sustain a good one v one, but one v two not so much. So like they they aim to kill their one v one target on a node, rotate mid, sustain a little bit, rotate back, and that's 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 like the meta that you see. It's it's looking to take dominance over the map as a solo player. Uh, in eighties, you can rely heavily on your teammates and. Therefore, it makes more sense to go with the more sustainable build, like a Soul Beast, instead of having a Mirage that does lose some 1v1s and does not 1v2 very well. You need to be able to kite. You need to be able to you know, evade like non-stop and, uh, and out-sustain with the plasma uptime, blah, blah, blah. And that's what Soul Beast provides. And that's why you see that difference between solo queue and, uh, and ATs. And I stand by the fact that Mirage is busted in gold plat play because, one, most people don't know how to play around the conditions. It's anti-fun. You can't cash through confusion. You can't run with Torment. You can't even dodge roll with Torment because you take damage. It has far too much disengage potential, far too much invulnerability. Um, I mean, deflection on, on evade as well. Like, I mean, you can dodge roll while stunned. You can do damage while you're evading now because people just like fucking throw bullets into you and shit. The kit is just, it, it's far too rewarding for passive play. And I don't like that. I think that's a really stupid thing. Uh, even if they nerfed Holosmith, I don't really care. They could nerf the damage output of Holosmith. They could nerf the damage output of pretty much everything across the board. But if they nerfed the sustainability of the uh, the Mirage and made it so that it was harder to get its conditions out, I'd be quite happy. I, I think the class as a whole just has far too much kit. And that, that's been my opinion the whole time. But at high level play, it's not true. Well, well yeah, and what I would say to that, and, and uh, I definitely want to uh, bring Sin into this in, in a little bit, uh, but if, if it isn't busted in comparative play, I don't really care, you know, just get good. You know, if it's, if it's, it, I think it's fine if, if different things are better in, in different kind of situations. Like, for example, as you're talking about Holosmith, right? Holosmith doesn't see a crazy amount of, of comparative play right now. Like, you, you don't see it um, a lot, like winning monthly ATs and stuff like that. But if it's great in solo mm -hmm. queue, I think that's fine. I think Fresh Air Weaver is another example of this, right? Doesn't really see a lot of competitive play, but you could, because it's so fast and it can really, um, Kind of swing momentum, really burst people down, destroy destroy people if you ignore it, right? And I think it's great. Uh, and I think that's 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 a very fine thing, and it it can be good in that game mode. And you know, you can certainly push for it to be more uh, more viable in a competitive setting. But uh, I mean, if if Mirage isn't incredibly disgusting in a in that competitive setting, then I, I mean, it, does it really need to? To get destroyed, like yeah, if you can't play around confusion, then I don't know, just get good, right? I mean, it's is that really so difficult? Just don't attack forehead, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, you can definitely argue that it's anti-fun, but the, the the trouble with the 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 kind of that the the anti-fun mechanical argument is that you'd have to really rework Mirage, right, to 
to make it less anti-fun, right? Like, a lot of the mechanics of the class are just inherently like that, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's just that that's just how it goes. Like the, the class would have to be radically changed. And, and Mesmer in general is kind of based around that that concept, right? That it, it will punish you for doing things. It's very Guild Wars One esque. I mean, Mirage it is it does feel a bit like old school Guild Wars One Mesmer, right? With uh, it will punish you for do doing certain actions. In this case, it's it's moving or or casting abilities, right? But but there is counterplay to that, right? I think there's stuff you could do. You could um, you could say skew torment damage even more in favor of. Um, only when you're moving, right? So, like, it, it, if you if you actually play around it, like, it, it does like nothing to you. Like, you could do something like that, right? But um, th there's <laughs> the to really fix like the balance of a lot of the POS specs, like uh, Barrage and perhaps Dead Eye and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's like a lot of redesign is necessary here. Just like playing with the numbers is not really going to get rid of that obnoxious elements, right? obnoxious element of of the way the the classes are, but. I don't know. I, I'd like to like to um, hear Sin's thoughts on what what does it matter if if like Mirage is really busted in solo queue as long as it doesn't see a lot of uh, play like winning winning tournaments and stuff like that. Like, what is the target for balance in the game? I think just EU is bad at playing comps with Mirage. Just look at NA. They are playing with uh, Mirage in the best team and they're winning everything. So I don't know. I think EU is behind. It's just Ooh. that no one has the the people and the comp around playing a Mirage. So, uh, so w w in in your mind, then, in the ideal composition, Mirage is does exist, then, right? You think? Mirage yeah, I, I think we are not even remotely close to find a meta setup in five v five because no one is screaming, no one is trying out comps. I think there's a lot of potential to play without Fire and Scourge, for example, play full mobility comp. Fire and Scourge is an issue by moving around the map because they're so slow. You can easily out rotate that. I don't see any problem. You can run mobility holo, you can run Mirage, you can run Thief, Soul Beast. Chrono, there's some a lot of potential, but no one, yeah, no one is practicing, so no one knows. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a very, I'd, that's one hell of a true statement there. Like that, you know, that's a simple the kind of that comparative environment isn't as fostered as it used to, so we don't see the the meta develop. And you do see quite a lot of variation. What people, um, you know, in, in what people are playing, like a few classes swapped in and out there. Of course, like the Firebrand Scourge, as you say, is the one that kind of sticks. But um, you know, that's probably only because it's kind of like the aha. You don't have to think. You know, that's that's the easy one. You, mm -hmm. you kind of <laughs> just, just do it. Just run it. And uh, no one, there's not a lot of questioning <laughs> going around the place. Uh, with, with I think the current meta right now that is being played in the high competitive, uh, like the the top end, it's like Fiber and Scourge, Rev Thief, and Soul Beast or Mirage. And I think it's the dumbest meta I've ever seen in my life. It's so, it's no complexity, it's no skill at all involved. It's just damage. I can probably turn off my eyes and just spam three on Sword uh, <laughs> Thief, and people die. And it's like, okay, whoever won the first team fight, you snowball the rest of the map, and it's like. No complexity at all. You don't have to think about rotations. Just kill. Just kill. Just kill. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, I think Angels describes it as a hold W matter. Just like run at people and yeah. kill them and just keep running. Yes, uh, it's so stupid. But, yeah. It's insane. What would you What would you attribute like this kind of like the kind of, I suppose the, the the devolution of the meta towards like this you know the, this less skilled less intricate gameplay is it Would you say it's down to the path of fire elite specializations for example is it Is it stuff like firebrand scourge, uh, dead eye uh, like the the buffs to stuff like rev and soul beast is that Is that what's causing this degeneracy? It's not necessarily only path of fire, but it's just uh, power creep and everything. Everything is already power creeped enough, and then they keep adding to other specs that are suffering. Like Court Thief, they're stacking that um, trait line for no reason because it has to compete with the others, you know? So we're never getting anywhere if they don't nerf everything to the ground. Like, do like World of Warcraft, where you stat squish everything, bring down the damage completely, and then you start working up from there. If people are not dying, okay, well, then we increase the damage a little bit. But if you <laughs> if you never start from the bottom, you're never, ne never going to have balance. Yeah, that's like the... That's why I think that Soul Beast and Mirage are an issue. It's not like, oh, Mirage isn't viable in uh, ATs. Well, no, it's viable somewhere else. So why don't you nerf, you know, both? You know, nerf everything, and that'll make other things good. I think Mirage would see more play if it could compete against like Soul Beast. Like I said, Soul Beast is the the meta duelist in ATs. If Soul Beast came down, then Mirage could compete. 
Uh, but well, similarly, Mirage you have things like two, is Full Counter on Warrior uh, got nerfed, and now it can't even kill Mirage clones. I mean, that that in itself. I mean, why do clones have so much health? It's ridiculous. But anyway, um, if you know that the the defensive creep came down for Hollow Smiths with the passive elixir S removal. Um, Warriors got the nerf on full counter and like their might up time on mage ta- mage bane tether uh, reduced. So their their sustainability has come down, uh, their outputs come down, and it it struck me as really strange that even though Soul Beast was on the receiving end of a few nerfs, um, Doyak still got buffed, and I don't think that uh, Soul Beast actually needed to re- to actually receive any buffs whatsoever. I think if anything, they should have just brought down that creep. Um, it made it even more powerful than it was. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, so like, you can't bring down two out of four dualist meta classes, and and then not really punish the other two because then it just like it shapes the meta in such a way that only two of them are really viable in competitive play, uh, and that's exactly what's happened. So, that's why everyone was saying, "Oh, the last balance patch was incomplete," and I, I stand by that because obviously we still see that there's two classes that are very very strong in uh, in the current competitive meta. So. Maybe the next patch that we don't know when's going to come, maybe like in the next two weeks, uh, I'm speculating. Uh, maybe that will tackle Mirage and Soul Beast. I've been told by Ben in stream that they are aware of those classes, but they've been saying that for the last three balance patches. So I don't really know what that really means. But uh, we may see. They can be aware of an issue, but not uh, aware of how to solve it. I, I, I mean, I think, yeah, I think they've been aware of it for a pretty long time i mean I'm, I'm sure they've been aware of stuff like firebrand scourge for uh <laughs> since path of fire release right but i mean that's uh, and this this goes into a whole other topic about well it, it's the like the agility level of of arena when it comes to balance right it's very low they tend to kind of trip over themselves a little bit and not really really go anywhere and when, when there are changes like the magnitude of those changes aren't really that high like it, it it they they like tickle an issue they'll poke at something like pick away at it and then like three balance patches later that you know something might have actually happened uh but uh, again like they, it's actually kind of funny they yeah. used to like i remember back in uh beginning of esl there we were complaining that they hammered bill like every time they nerfed something they just hammered the spec to oblivion <laughs> and now we have the other issue where they're mm. just they're just like tweaking it slowly it's like we're just one oh, percent here like not relevant at all yeah and, and that's I mean, obviously you know you do want to find that kind of mid ground between the two because obviously it, both of those are not ideal of course but to be honest we could probably do with a little bit of smashing right now like i think a few you know so, so well, <laughs> a lot of smashing well, <laughs> perhaps perhaps across the world i think that's i, I think that would be fair to say that would be the general consensus that pretty much everything's power level is is too high right i think that would be a fair assessment of the situation more or less all classes are do too much damage and spam out too many boons and stuff like that. But uh, I mean, what, what do you do in this instance? Like, how do you, how do they as a team even like come to that conclusion of like, okay, we have to change everything? Because I guarantee you, they're not prepared for that workload. Uh, it's not possible the with their, how they build everything. I think like World of Warcraft is just stats, right? Everything is the same stat. Here you have split game mode, so I don't think it's possible. But it would be a dream scenario. But I mean, we. Sind and I were discussing last night that we would like to see like a meta shake up every six months. I mean, six months being a very, uh, I mean, that's a pretty large uh, space of time uh, to expect a, a bit of a shake up that might kind of revitalize PvP. But not necessarily. Like, uh, if you remove uh, Fiber and Scourge from the meta right now, I, I think you'd see a lot of potential um, builds being played and uh, comps, especially in 80s. But how do you do that? How, how how would you actually be able to remove those two from like how they are? Because I mean, they're so strong together. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's no other support that really is comparable to Firebrand. So like, how, um, I think if you nerf Firebrand, if you nerf Firebrand really hard, they already then, nerfed it once though, didn't they? Yeah, but just nerf it even more. It's been getting nerfs. <laughs> it's been getting nerfs for a few balance patches now. To be fair, they've they've been chipping away at the boon duration, stability uh, duration, and the cooldowns as well. Uh, more more significantly in this previous one as well but i i, I su- suppose that they did just um so I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the like, smiter's boon right from guild wars one where they just like increased the the cost of this ability by five and made it a minute minute long cooldown it's a bit of a meme but because they just wanted to delete it from the game right i like, suppose they did just literally just delete it from the game they say you know what firebrand tomes all have a three minute cooldown now okay and so does so does scourge shade scourge shade you know every time you put a shade you need to wait a minute before it comes back okay like fuck you they would never Uh, see play 
Well, but, I mean, suppose they did that though. Would, <laughs> would that improve if they, yeah, if they never see play, right? Okay, would, would that improve the game? Do you think would that would that increase? The fun level in PvP, if they just literally just annihilated the player, it wouldn't because then you'd never be like not in the downstate. Well, and that, that's the that's the thing. Well, I mean, what, what, maybe you play something else, right? You play a different class, but that, I think that's I think why um, Arena may be a little bit hesitant to uh, nerf the hell out of these these specializations and these classes, right? Because suddenly, you know, the players that are enjoying these classes right suddenly like well what do i play now i can't do anything if, if um and especially in in guild wars 2 where i think a lot of people like to play the same thing uh and not really not really adapt i suppose to to how the meta is right uh, I, I think that's probably one of the reasons why they're a little hesitant to do that but i don't know i'm not, I'm not I agree sure about that. yeah so. i mean we have the problem already that some classes aren't played like how much do you see ellie's in 80s or monthly 80s <laughs> like they have the same issue. Uh, yeah, that's that's certainly true. Uh, but I mean, you you'd, you see that a lot more in say ranked, though, right? Like, I think in, in a way that's probably I mean, uh, most of most PvP games are ranked, right? Are just are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if we only care about ranked, then yeah, I guess you see some Ellie's, but not much. Yeah, it, it's it's certainly true, right? But I think um, even if I mean, Ellie is not that bad in rank though as i understand it though like certainly um you can you can you can get a lot of work done then you can certainly get to a high rating by playing if you know what you're doing um it, is it i don't know with with a lot of mirages and uh full beast i don't think at least that's successful i mean obviously there are, you know it's not it isn't the best class in the entire world uh, yeah, yes exactly Cellafrag, dude Cellafrag, man i think the only one in eu who actually reached legend was cran and he played ellie Weird build as, as well. Yeah, extra funky build, dude. Oh, he was playing Tempest, wasn't he? Support Tempest. Nah, I think he played a little bit mixed, like for Tempest, but also um, Weaver with Dagger. Yeah. That, oh yeah, mm. Legal Method as well. Oh, there you go. It's just, it's just like it's not a fun class, as, as far as I'm concerned. If you actually look at like how it plays compared to Hollow Smith, compared to Solby's, compared to like you know maybe even Thief Core Guard, it's just an evade bot, like. <laughs> I stand by that. It's just not fun. Um, you never really feel like you've had a good fight when you play into a Mar uh, into a, a Weaver or into an Ellie like flat out. It's just not fun. Um, I'd like to see more of their kit, like maybe less evades and more damage output. Um, I, I don't know. It feels like all the time they're just healing. They're just dodge rolling and healing, and then maybe they do a little bit of damage. But because their damage output is so minimalistic that it's any class that's just rotating doing damage can out sustain them pretty much. Um, so I, I don't think it's a, it's a fun class, I and mean, that possibly that's maybe why it's not really incentivized to be played in ATs. I don't, I don't know. Sure, and that that's uh, uh, that is an element to things like fun is important, and I, I think fun is important in balance, um, and it, it should be taken into consideration. I think anyway, uh, and and that's why you th there is a case to be made for nerfing stuff like Mirage, in my opinion. Right, like if it's not fun to play against, you know, then maybe you should. Get rid of it, right? Like, it, it, you know, not not everything needs to be uh, be viable. Uh, if that makes any sense, right? For for example, like, uh, Berserker is a pretty good example of this. Like, not no one plays like Berserker in PvP. No one right? plays that okay? shit. <laughs> no one plays Berserker, but that's okay, right? Because it's good in other places. It's a very fine class in 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 raids, for example, raids and fractals. It's it's a perfectly good class there, uh, and and vice versa, though, right? You know, some things are just not good in say say raids or not good in fractals, right? And that's that's kind of okay. So not not everything uh, has to be good in every game mode. So, so just can I, can I pick you out on something? Yeah, sure. Because yeah. you yeah. said that you can pretty much play anything in raids. Yeah, pretty much. They, that came from your mouth. Oh yeah. So like, if if pretty much anything can be played in raids, yep. and be viable, as in it can be used to actually kill a boss. Surely you should be able to play whatever you fucking want in PvP and achieve the same. But that's a completely different be, issue because uh, in raids it's, it's, you're not you're not playing optimal if you're playing anything. And if you play and you're anything playing versus PvP, players, you, yeah, you can do it, but you'll be. I, I, yeah, but I mean, completely writing off a class spec as just completely unplayable because it doesn't achieve anything. Berserker, obviously, being one of them in PvP, surely they should just try to bring Berserker up to the the level of other classes, just so that it is a viable option. Maybe not perfectly optimal, but it's viable. At this point, it's not even viable. But you literally see a Berserker in your team, and the game is over. Like. 
Did you see what I mean? Um, the thing is, though, I mean, it, it's I, it. Re I think it depends, right? It very much depends. Like if you're in, if you're in fucking gold league, and the berserker is Boyce, I mean, yeah, you're probably going to be in pretty good shape, no? I don't know. You also have to remember that certain builds <laughs> are better in certain metas. So, like, um, like it could be really OP potentially if the meta changes, dra like, all of a sudden. So like that's that's why power creep is so bad. Like forcing something to be meta, like when it's not meta, only because of like it doesn't fit the role of the meta, and then you power creep it to be meta is when you really create this like unhealthy balance. Because then, if the meta does fit it, then it's like way too broken. Well, then arguably don't buff it. Bring stuff down to meet it. Right. Because the power creep is way too high across the board anyway. So why don't they just use berserker as like a base level? You know, fucking Corelli, I don't fucking know. Like anything that they want to kind of say, okay, well, this isn't really seeing a lot of play. Let's bring everything else up, uh, else down. And then it, it becomes viable because it can compete and it's not being fucked by the power creep and the, the defense creep in, in the game. Surely that's an opportunity or an option. Well, yeah, I think that is, uh, I think that's kind of the consensus we're almost generating here, right? It's uh, the, the fact that the power level should probably be brought down of like all, a lot of the meta specs right now are just so damn strong uh, in compared to the other stuff that makes it, it look ridiculous and and this kind of goes into what what sim was talking about earlier about uh, about um core thief right they just kept kept buffing it and buffing it and buffing it because it needed to compete they, they wanted you not to play you know not to play daredevil anymore or you know not to play dead eye as much so they they said all right we're gonna make core thief really good uh we're bringing back sd oh, boys like, um, I think they buffed Axe seven times in a row. <laughs> and it, it was never good because Power Necro was never meta, right? But they kept thinking, well, maybe we just need to keep buffing it and that'll make it, like, you know, playable. Well, no, you just need to, like, balance the game to allow that role of that class to be meta, right? Not just power creep to, like, insane levels. And now, like... They had to nerf Power Reaper because it was like one shotting people with with Axe being so power creeped. So I mean, uh, Avan, can you can you expand a little bit on how how should a read net go about doing that? Like, what balance changes could they do? What could they have done, for example, to make um, a Power Reaper better in the current? Like, what how could they change the meta to make Power Reaper better without just keep giving it more damage to the point where it one shots you, right? <laughs> the reason why power necro isn't good is because like it gets it gets too hard focused and it doesn't really have that much sustain so like in comparison to scourge um a class that can kind of like have its own sustain um because it's it's mostly ranged it's not only um, sustain it's the counter pressure as well right you can like just spam uh aoe around you and on the node at the same time whereas uh, uh, even while you're being stopped uh, yeah, Reaper needs to be like uh, in the the middle of like a, a team fight, which you know Node is not life, right? But you can you can do damage on the Node if you're uh, Scourge, but you don't need to be standing on it. So it's like that sustain that you get just from being able to position yourself is like just why Scourge is better than Reaper. But Reaper is still good. It's just like there's like something that's better than it. So if you like force it to be good by power creeping it rather than like balancing the things that are better than it, then you don't really get balance. You just get power creep. Plus there's a lot of heavy boons in team fights right now. So Scourge has access to a little bit more than, for example, Reaper. Mm, I think Reaper has plenty of- uh, Yeah, with right? Axe, just... yeah, for sure. But I, I'm, I'm talking about like utilities as well. The utilities are so much better. It's more like the, the fact that a Kani build uh, that does um, like weakness yeah. and cripple constantly, is what is so debilitating because like power reaper does plenty of like chill and stuff but that's like the only thing that yeah, like, scourge elite also you, you can't like f like land your damage on reaper unless they're chilled mm. so like scourge has tons of cripple to make it land its damage uh, so, well, so i guess uh, reaper also suffers from the same thing as daredevil thief like a lot of blocks as well from Aegis and yeah so again it would come down to you know, toning down, say, Scourge then, and that would inherently make Reaper better, <laughs> as you would expect. Design, right? I think then uh, Necro would just fall off completely because 
you see how fa fast the uh, scourge falls already. <laughs> like you look at the monthly yesterday, how how fast did the uh, scourges die? But this is assuming that everything gets nerfed at the same time, right? Like, yeah, yeah not if you saying, would bring everything like, down. One thing that people don't realize when like like when I make a a, a balance video and and someone gets like hyper triggered that I I nerf their class, it's because they went to the the timestamps. They only looked at their class, and then they're like, "Why would you nerf?" my class well i nerfed all classes you know right like that's that's the thing people don't understand is like they have to think of like the future uh like situation where everything is nerfed like live in a world where everything else is nerfed well then yeah it's fine if your class gets nerfed like it's even better in that case sometimes but like people are so tunnel vision and so selfish that they're like nah my class cannot be nerfed because then i can't beat this other class which they have no idea how that class works anyways yeah, yeah. then that would be a good thing. That, that, like, as, as we said before, if we bring down the power creep across mm. the board, then things that weren't viable become viable. And that might change up how classes play against one another in PvP. That in itself would shake up the meta because all of a sudden people aren't necessarily playing Hollowsmith. Maybe now they're playing like some fucking obnoxious power mirage shatter, you know, which I, I don't disagree with uh, people saying that it's hard to get your output on that. That uh, in, in comparison to the Condi uh, pressure you get from like Condi Mirage. Um, I would like to see other things in play. So I would I would actually encourage ArenaNet to just literally smash every class on the head. Whether it means that like Hollowsmith becomes temporarily like, you know, not viable and you have to play fucking core NG or whatever. And it, it, it requires people to actually learn more about the game and to uh to actually adapt more often. That'd be a good thing. And I, I think I, I would say that we're all in agreement with like power creep being nerfed across the board and then things becoming more viable because of that. Is that what we would all like to see? Is that is that the consensus? I, I would certainly... As long as you get rid of the DPS meta, like, I, I'd rather go to a bunker meta again, where you actually have to learn uh, teamwork and uh, synergize with each other, like we had in pre hot and everything. Like, like that, that you actually have to be two players uh, coordinating together to kill something. Right now, it's just... You don't even have to think about what you're doing. You just spam damage. It's so brain dead. It's crazy. Mm. I don't think the bunker meta itself is what you <laughs> might want because isn't it wasn't no, that no. that was like a really slow style of play and it was like i'm not talking just... chrono bunker but i'm talking <laughs> a bit a, a bit slower at least yeah it was okay like in like not pof but like post hot near the end of hot that was like a good bunker meta yeah for sure i i think that will uh, the the speed of the the current meta is actually one of the core components that's driving a lot of players away from from pvp i would say like you know the the population it, kind of across across the board it's not just pvp of course like a, a lot of game modes like world versus world raids pvp i think are losing uh, some of that player base now but i think uh, certainly with regards to pvp i think balance kind of does have a bit of a, of a of a role to play in that i think the the speed of the meta new players come into pvp then they get just like oh i've got 20 confusion stacks on mirage oh a core guardian one shot me oh a rev is one shotting me like what's going on here i think it does i uh, it does drive people away and it confuses people who are moving into the game where they don't really understand why they're losing right so they just well they just stop playing right so uh, w w would you guys agree with that yeah. it, it does balance you know is is the balance of the game um uh, kind of causing the population issues is it causing people to have less fun and be be driven away because not everyone doesn't like it like a lot of you know plenty of people uh very much enjoy pvp we still see you know a good solid few teams playing on the, in the monthly automated tournament for example um and you know the you know ranked queues are not crazy right they're like you know five minutes to find, find a game sometimes you know you can even get like two minute cues like some you can have some pretty short ones and it can get longer depending on how you're rated but still um do you guys think that but pvp will be restored to its former glory with uh some superior balancing coming up from from arena no no too late <laughs> oh what? it is it, yeah. it genuinely is too late like Everything that we've been asking for for like five seasons hasn't happened. We we get we we might get a response from like you know the the skill devs who they go okay well we know this is kind of busted we'll tone this down. But then at the same time as toning something down, they just buff something out of fucking you know Narnia, and all of a sudden we're like why the fuck is this thing now relevant? This thing is like controlling the entire meta. Fantastic. And then they go well. We're not going to undo that. We're going to leave that in for a season and a half, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll adjust it then. So then everybody endures it for six weeks, gets pissed off, leaves PvP, says this is a fucking shit show, 
and then never comes back. And now they've lost faith. You're assuming that in... they keep doing bad balances. He, Teapot's saying, what if they actually start balancing the game? Where are the people that they're going to like suddenly bring back? Like They've already left. There's plenty of people coming back into the game. And, yeah, like... I think if you completely change the meta to something new... I think a lot of people will come back. For example, it's hella boring playing SD Thief for two years. If we would have DP or hell fucking pistol whip back or staff, whatever, just create something new that would fit the meta, it would be fun. Everyone would come back. Same with other classes. Like we we have seen the same classes, the same kind of playstyle since the beginning of Path of Fire, and it's getting boring. Just play something like nerf everything. And then you bring back old specs and people will come back. That's why I'm saying every six months com completely change the meta and you will have a lot of people trying out and they will be like, oh, wow, I can play something new. But then do you not think that like one of the main issues they have facing their balance patches is that they don't tackle issues they've created uh, within good time? That, that, like if they see an issue that's I, I, like this happens time and time again, there's always something that happens that we then discover at the end of a balance patch because some some like, for example, um, Abrasive Grit with Sanctuary, <laughs> right? Uh, this this was like put in, it wasn't last balance patch, it was the one before, is that correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah, Am I, I believe so. Yeah, th that, th this that was, wasn't that was over Christmas, fixed, this was before that, Christmas, that was wasn't fixed, it? it was, uh, that did get hot fixed. That, it was hot fixed, but like two weeks later. It they, was, they literally, uh, they, they the disabled. Got in, so whenever that was. I, dude, I don't fucking remember. But like, I know that they, instead of actually tackling how Abrasive Grip operated, um, or how the new rune... No, actually, no. Instead of uh, tackling how the rune operated, they adjusted a brace of grit. So they actually nerfed Scourge to counter something that they'd literally just implemented, which I thought was really ridiculous. So actually, like, tackle the trait line of something that had been existing as it was for months and months and months and months and months to then not actually cancel out the, the rune that they'd literally just implemented without testing. So their methods of like adjustment are even a little bit interesting. Uh, that, that's the word I'm going to use here because um, I don't want to be offensive. But I do think that maybe in future, if they do implement something, it could be a case of, OK, we're going to allow ourselves a 72 hour window where things that have come out of this meta change are discovered to be busted. And we have good evidence to suggest that this is busted. This interaction is uh, dominating PvP. Everybody's complaining about it. Streamers are complaining about it. YouTube content's complaining about it. It's all the talk of the town. It's on the forums. Here's the adjustment we need to actually fix that issue. Instead of making us wait six weeks, instead of making us wait two, three, four weeks, I mean, two weeks is a quarter of a season. So like, why the fuck do we have to wait 25% of a season to actually see a, a change when that's already given people plenty of time to climb that leaderboard or to do whatever the fuck it was that they were going to do in that period. Um, so, so yeah, I think quicker responses to their, you know, their, their balance mishaps would be much more uh, beneficial to actually how people perceive PvP and how they, they go, okay, well, we are being listened to. They do care. Here's the change that we wanted to see, um, which doesn't happen. We, we, don't, we don't even get any transparency, really, besides Ben. I keep saying Ben is the little window that's in a concrete fucking tower that is ArenaNet. You know, that I wish we had more transparency across the board, uh, but we don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Biggest issue I have with uh, when they release balance patches is that they are not even mentioning why or like what their idea of the build is supposed to be. Like you're just nerfing or changing something, but you're not elaborating on why. Where do you want the meta to go? Do you want to have a full DPS meta that everything just melts in one second or? What do you want? Do you want Soul Beast to be unkillable? Do you want Mirage to be obnoxious? Like, just explain a little bit. You don't have to go in depth on what changes you were facing or what you were discussing. Just give us why, a small why. Like Jaw mentioned about World of Warcraft, where they mentioned um, we did this because we felt it was too powerful in uh, 3v3 or whatever they say. Yeah, they they they, t they literally talk about certain skills and their impact in PvP, one v one, two v two, three v three, and they they actually they explain their reasoning. We don't really get that. We do get a little brief uh, explanation sometimes before a class. Like they'll they'll literally list the class. They'll say this class was doing this, but not really actually breaking down the particular skills that were the issue. Which I think is what they to to kind of like convince everybody that they do have an understanding of like what they're doing or why they're doing something. I think just mentioning a certain skill. Uh, you know, their 
uh, recently with the soul boons change with moa stance when they adjusted moa stance and they reduced it, they, they reduced the actual uh, duration impact wasn't it or, uh, from like consuming plasma uh, when you use moa stance i think that was what was adjusted it was like lowered a little bit i can't remember exactly well, then what they, they did. buffed uh, griffin stance and broke that one yeah. instead <laughs> yeah exactly so, so like giving a reason as to why they did that as a follow up is more interesting like did they want to restore something that they felt that they underpowered or again like it's it's what we're talking about so like a little bit more transparency in regards to the changes they make would be fantastic uh, in tackling balance and obviously giving us a chance to counter that with uh, with whatever the the changes that we we do see in the meta so well yeah and and, and perhaps uh, communication with the players taking feedback from the players is is very much important as well like as i understand there is a there is a secret pvp illuminati discord where some feedback is given to some uh, to the developers right um and uh, that, i don't think that's going to exist much longer uh a lot of people joining it have been running their mouth i mean i, I was quite guilty of that i kept talking about it and uh i've recently left it um mainly because i didn't see change and i felt that the amount of whining and information i was providing alongside other people who were giving like they, they were having really really long uh discussions and giving feedback and pretty much none of the changes that were actually recommended in that discord actually went into any of the patches that have happened in the last uh well the last two balance patches so it, it just felt like it was almost like it was ranting and it was providing information that didn't go anywhere uh so i've left it um i know a bunch of other people have left it and people have kind of lost faith in that as a as an initiative are you just also, saying that because you feel that way or is I feel it actually that way. Getting- I felt we don't we don't actually get any feedback direct. Well, we didn't when I was in there, which I mean was like a week ago. Uh, didn't get any feedback directly from the uh, developers. We knew we were there. We knew they were there, but we never got any actual feedback. So, and to be honest, people really shouldn't be talking about it anyway. That this is like what Ben said to me. It, it was never meant to be like a public thing. It was actually started off as an initiative just to get communication going, but it it hasn't developed into anything. And they don't want anybody to think that it's a favorable thing, like where PVP developers are, you know, favoritism and all that shit. So it. It's it's not really being used, um, and I don't think that it will be used in future. Uh, or if it does, it will be a meme. It, it won't be actually used regularly. Uh, that, that strikes me as a as is completely backwards. Uh, you know, let me let mm. me just go in on a read net here real quick. That's that's a, that sounds crazy, right? It's like who who understands the game the best? Okay, right. At the end of the day, it's going to be the motherfuckers who are no lifing playing three hundred games in ranked. You know, uh, every single day. That would be impossible unless you're a bot. Okay, but. Still, you know, the, the, this it seems like the easiest way to balance the game would be to, to gather as many opinions uh, from the players as possible. Of course, there's going to be some bias, right? You know, I go on a YouTube video, guys. What do I see? I, Cinderness, I see Cinder saying buff thief nerf mirage, okay? I see Helsurf. He's always saying buff mesmer, okay? You know, it, yes, there's going to be bias, but to a certain extent that that is it is memery right okay if you actually sit down and have an actual conversation about balance with with eat with a lot of top players i think i don't know i kind of believe that they can be objective right you know surely or am i am i too do i have too much faith there guys uh surely the, i mean we did this yeah. even back before like uh esl times before hot even <laughs> and uh it went it never went well even there Ooh. like we had abjur complaining about rampage of warrior being 20 seconds because it that did too much damage and we ended up getting that nerf like <laughs> was it broken no way what the fuck warrior was shit back then but uh yeah oh, okay maybe i was a little optimistic then, uh, yeah, I mean, look at Chrono, Chrono Bunker. We said as soon as Pro League started, don't even release this because Chrono Bunker is the worst build that you've ever seen in this history. And then uh, there was a lot of things that were broken, but what happened? No changes for a whole season of Pro League. Everyone played Chrono Bunker and it was the most busted thing we've ever seen. They don't, they don't do those hot fixes. They, they don't listen. Yeah, they don't. I, I really don't think they take player feedback on board. It's that, that kind of hard that to listen to though, like because there is so much bias. Hmm. Well, I mean, you say that, but then the Holosmiths that were in that Discord at that time, they did uh, actually talk about how there was far too much quickness uptime, myself included. They nerfed Toss Elixir U as a result of that, I believe. Um, so, that, you know, there are some I mean, things... That's one situation, to. but, um, like, if, but you're, you, if you're a dev and you're trying to go on the forums, like... I don't think they do that I don't that know either. if they even go on the forums anymore <laughs> I think they because it's stats. so difficult to discern what's, like, actually meaningful I was discussing this with Cinder last night as well um, in this Discord. 
um, we were saying about how we think that, or I was saying how I think that they actually look at statistics, uh, even when it comes to like say raid bosses and changing uh, the stats or the um, the weights of uh, certain skills in say raids. They look at maybe one boss and might say, okay, so what is doing the most damage to this boss? What is the skill that's doing the most damage to this boss from this class? Uh, maybe we could nerf that by a percentage and then bring percentage up on something else. Yeah, but you it also seem... have to interpret those statistics correctly because, like, it, well, exactly. And and I like think that if saying if Rangers get stats, top damage every game, they must do too much damage. Let's nerf their damage. Well, that's not like, you know, that's it, not. Yeah, again, it, it's it's situational, isn't it? So like, Revenant does a hell of a lot of burst damage in a short duration, but it might not necessarily do the highest damage across the board because if you look at say one v one classes right. that are constantly dueling. Uh, they're going to uh, um, accumulate much more damage over time, whereas somebody, somebody like a Revenant that is doing the burst damage is going to be assassinating targets, but possibly few and far between, like as they're rotating around the map. So it, yeah, again, statistics can be misread, and it's important to actually understand where those uh, stats are being placed, I, I would say. Uh, sure, but I mean, I, well, I mean the, the, the alarming thing there is that if they if they nerf something and then buff something else, isn't that like a really odd approach to balance, like on the class? Isn't what, what, you, what, what you were talking about Griffin stance, right? And and uh, well, the Doliak stance, for example, on on Soul Beast, they yeah they nerf the they nerf Moa stance, but they buff the other two stances. It's like well, what's going on? They're like, why would they do that, right? That's an incredibly bizarre uh, approach to balancing, don't you think? Like, is the entire methodology of Arena Net just completely balked? Is it is it just all wrong, guys? Yeah. What is going on here? <laughs> well, I don't even know how they take their feedback. I mean, uh, I'm not on the Discord, never been on that Discord, but uh, I know Ben is uh, around a lot on my stream, listening to what I say and stuff. And I mean, I'm not the only one complaining about Deadeye, for example. I think Deadeye is absolutely obnoxious in rank. Like, it's mm. stupid, zero counterplay. Yeah, good. One, specific, uh, <laughs> trait, one specific trait making it just absolutely... Dodge. Yeah, <laughs> just dodge and get stealth. Like, it's such a stupid mechanic. That it's not even viable. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and I've complained about that. Nothing is being touched on Dead Eye. Like the changes they they're doing is so stupid as well. Like, oh, we felt the burst um, up front from Dead Eye is too much. Then they nerf um, lead attacks of Thief, which is basically um, a core mechanic of Thief. Instead of nerfing Dead Eye burst, yeah, like you're nerfing essentially da well, dagger yeah. pistol builds or any other build of Thief for what? For Dead Eye, which still actually it doesn't even work. Because then I can still stack the lead attacks out of uh, combat with uh, rifle four, so it's they're not even affected. They it's still bugged, so that I still, and yeah, it's untouched. Yeah, and, and well, and, and to to kind of go more on that that topic of like the the balance approach of reading it, I think it. I think there's something to be said for like the lack of agility on the changes, right? Like, um, for example, there, there there is a there was a bug with uh, you know the, a lot of bugs in the game just kind of stay there, and and also a lot of unintended consequences of balance patches don't get addressed nearly in time. Like it's kind of whenever there's a balance patch, I feel uh, in the PvP community especially, there's kind of a general consensus of oh, well here we go, we've got this for three months now, nice. It's just uh, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, uh, what, what would be the ideal balance schedule? Does it need to be twice as often? Or does it need to be a little bit more uh, almost on the fly, right? Maybe you can leave it for three months sometime, for example, right? Maybe sometimes you need to have another cheeky balance patch, you know, another or even like another two weeks after because something is disgusting and needs to be deleted from the game, right? But also, do we need to see more, well, massive balance patches, right? Because I think that is something that we've been skirting around the, the, in, the entire tea time. Like, just how many pages of balance changes do we actually need to, to get us back on the right track for Guild Wars 2 PvP balance? Uh, I think, again, it'd be good to see uh, a meta shakeup uh, infrequently. So, uh, like, a, its own little isolated patch that they do perhaps to... You know they work on it for a really long time, but it is literally just to switch up the meta and try and like just very very quickly swap things up. Um, but like you say, when we do get something that happens uh, and it cucks PvP, we don't see a change for like three months. So I don't really care if they do them infrequently, but it's more a case of uh, being able to go back and fix an issue that they create uh, during that that like uh, unloaded patch. Now. I don't like that they do a patch in the middle of the season. I think it makes more sense to do it during the off season so that you have time to adjust those classes 
without it impacting the rank queues. Does it really matter? Like if your rating changes because you can't ad adapt, isn't like the ability to adapt like good? It's not always about adaptation though. For example, with Scourge being immune to conditions because of Abrasive Grit on a new rune release, that took a so long time to get changed. Like, bugs. It's not necessarily a bug. It's just something they didn't consider. It's not a bug. There's no bug interaction there. How can you even say that Abrasive it's Grit like, and, and Rune of Sanctuary is a bug? Exploit. It's not a bug. You're it's just saying they're ex exploiting for more rating. Well, well, yeah, but they're exploiting something that ArenaNet implemented. So it's a patch change well, that results in a class change. By ArenaNet, wasn't it? Sorry? Mirage was implemented by ArenaNet. And people have been exploiting that. Yes. So it, is any rating that people gain from Mirage not null and void? Whoa. Or like, what are you saying? Like, the balance patch creates like more exploits, but those already exist. So who cares as long as it changes? <laughs> what? <laughs> why, why are you trying to like dissolve my argument? There's no way that Abrasive Grit and Rune of Sanctuary are a bug, okay? They are an interaction that happened but, during a patch that okay, was not- Okay, are you not... saying they still are in the game or what? Can I, can I finish my fucking sentence or not? <laughs> right? That is something that ArenaNet did not consider when they unloaded that patch. Therefore, they should have countered that and removed or disabled the interaction very quickly, okay? It doesn't matter if Mirage is something that they implemented and whether or not that's null and void rating. Like, what are you I getting agree. at, dude? But stop, I agree. Stop like, it. You, could, you could just have disabled the rune instantly. Hotfix and uh, like they do with the server crashes. Hotfix the rune, disable it, and then fix the trait whenever you have time. That would exactly. be, have been the best. And that's exactly. how they do with all the other games. Okay, something is completely broken and you could consider it an exploit. Okay, we, hot, we disable it and we hotfix it. Same with when raids broke, they disabled the raid. Like, you have the, you have the, yeah, I don't know. It's, I'm it trying be. to say that it doesn't matter if they balance patch in the middle of a season, if they just balance it. That's what I'm saying. What? No, no, I, yeah, I'd be, I, I honestly, I'd be inclined to agree with Val on here. I think it's fine to to balance some mid-season tiers. I like, who cares, right? It, it, what? It, it, like you were making a big deal about them balancing mid-season, like. I didn't really make a big deal. I just said that I would prefer if they did it off-season, so they would have time to react. They they would actually see it without impl without it actually impacting the rank queue because I think people going into ranks starting a season might feel very comfortable in a class that they've learned during off-season, and they don't want to see an adaptation happen in the middle of the season. I think, like, but if you're somebody you... that's a Firebrand main who enjoys playing Firebrand and wants to play it as a support in its current state, because at the end of the, or sorry, at the beginning of the season, it's, it is working perfectly fine for you. You know exactly how it works, interacts this way in the meta. And then halfway through, or maybe two weeks before the end of the meta, suddenly your class becomes bullshit and your current rating actually doesn't really mean anything because now you have to learn a whole new class because you're now irrelevant. That's not really fair when you've worked six weeks to get to somewhere working on a class. So I would like to see that these balance patches actually go in off season where people then have an, op an opportunity to learn a class and use that class, utilize it during the season and not have that just random ass change happen in the middle of the season. Okay, so have you, I know Sinjaner has said this, but have you ever said off season games are just the mean? Have you ever said that like they don't matter? Cause that doesn't matter. seem like they a good matter. place to practice your build. You're playing versus meme builds the whole time. Well, yeah, but that doesn't Wouldn't mean it be best to use it during operates. the season. It doesn't matter because you're still learning how that class operates. I learned a lot of classes right. during. So it doesn't matter when the balance patch happens, as long as it happens. <laughs> what? Wait! Wait! wait. <laughs> What? What? I, I feel do you like not understand? You're like dissolving the if, argument. If the yet balance again, patch happens sooner than later, that can be in the middle of the right. If you were to take the current release schedule and then apply something that is a fix to the end of the current release schedule, I would probably be content with that because I would see a change that would actually fix issues that were as a result of the balance patch. Correct. But if they were then going to do a patch off season, right? And they were going to make something completely broken, or they were going to completely uh, dissolve a class that I main. For example, say for example, they killed off Hollow Smith in the middle of off season. I would like a little time to actually learn how to play a class and learn how to play it, you know, very effectively, so that I would have a good chance going into the next rated sister uh, rated season that I'd be able to compete and not have to learn a class at the end of the the fucking season and go, 
Okay, so those last six weeks where I've been playing my main and I thought I was doing pretty well, yeah, they don't but matter. I'll just play really, really well for the this season. season. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm okay with that happening as long as you can play another build of your class. Yeah, as, long well, as, I mean, as long as they don't like completely delete yeah. the class. I think that's no, fine. yeah, exactly. Let's say yeah. they would change SD Thief and you just play buff DP. DP, and DP Thief would be good again or better. Well, what and, if they make uh, DP Thief or whatever your your whole class not viable a whole season? You know, wouldn't uh, that be uh, worse? Ellie yeah, Ellie I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. To me, I don't. I think if you want to be competitive, you have to um, be able to uh, overcome yeah. adversity. Yeah, of course, adaptation that's... and being yeah, it's yeah, fine. I understand that, but again, like completely cucking somebody for something they've worked hard for, you know, like expecting you to learn a completely different thing to you know be your your result for the end of the season. To I feel like that's, that's kind of unfair. Well, yes, there's got, obviously it's, it's, a, it's a competition element, but it doesn't mean that everybody else is going to be on the same receiving end of that adjustment. I mean, if they, they kill one class out of fucking nine, that's not fair on the, on the one, but it's, it's fucking amazing for the other like eight because then they, they know that you know, the majority of those classes aren't, or that class won't be existing in PvP. Maybe that, it, that you know, Firebrand, for example, with great support. Now it's irrelevant. Okay, well, that shakes up the meta, and now it means that every Firebrand main now needs to play something else. They might play it subpar because all they've done is main... Uh, Firebrand since POF release. And well, hopefully, uh, they would actually balance the game, and then it wouldn't matter because okay, yeah, yeah, you know Firebrand. Okay, let me let me let me let, let, let me try and guide our two debaters to some middle ground here. Like, shall we agree that it will be better to have like the big balance patches in the off season, right? Okay, where it's it doesn't matter that much, and then as the season goes on, say every few weeks or something, we can have some adjustments, okay, and a few little tweaks to some things that are perhaps not intended, for example. I don't know, for example, like, um, I think, uh, are people complaining about this new obnoxious chrono build that's going around with the, like, the, the you know, the, the blurred Poor inscriptions? Chrono yeah, like, with the, the ultra jewelry. Yeah, if something is overperforming, yeah. if something is overperforming in the middle of the season, then yeah, you should look at, yeah. okay, can we tweak this a little bit to, to make it less? obnoxious then okay then do that yeah i'd be up for that yeah. so, i feel like adjustments would be good in the middle of the season yeah precisely but not full-on changes which are big changes yeah. off-season little changes mid-season's fine yeah I, I think that would be i think that'll be a nice nice middle ground because um having some having a having a meta right a certain meta for three months i think that's actually okay i think uh, you know uh, having each season perhaps have its own kind of little microcosm of a meta game would be perfectly fine right um as long as the balance is in a good state right i think that the reason why the three months seems like a hell of a long time is because it feels like we're on the road to actually getting a healthy meta game right okay if we were already there then it will be okay just to have some you know some fairly major changes every three months right because then you know then everything is already fine like you're not thinking like oh my god we've got to wait another three months for this bullshit to be addressed right um but wh whereas now that that is the case right if we were already there then you wouldn't be too too worried about it right because they are you know the balance is all right and we'll get some some changes in three months i will freshen it up a little bit because right now it feels like every three months we're just like crawling dragging our way to having a fun pvp meta game right okay whereas if we were already there Three months would be, oh, we're going to have a nice little shake-up, keep the game fresh, keep PvP fresh, right? Um, whereas now it's like, you know, please, please, Ben, save us three months, save us, Ben, from this AIDS. Uh, so, I don't, I don't know, there you go. Is, is that a little bit of, perhaps a little bit of middle ground there for, uh, <laughs> for everyone? I think, you, I, don't know, I think you're spot on. I think it's spot on. I think big, so what big you're big saying is you're fine with there being a balance patch. Uh, when does the season end? No sooner than March 18th. Uh, well, I mean, that's only because we're in this mid um, mid ba mid uh, season balance patch kind of rhythm, right? Um, now, I love balance patches. Okay, I think it's really fun to to think about stuff. It's, it's it's the most content in the game for me. I you know for the same reason I'd love new elite specializations, just new ways to play uh, to play the game, right? Uh, but no, I mean, hey, why not just do a you know. Why not just double dip Val? You know, let's just have a balance patch mid season, then we can do another one after season. Let's get on our new tea time schedule. Okay. So, so you're saying Anet is gonna magically learn how to like balance their game like more rapidly than they already do, which is like snail's pace. What was the uh I don't think Do you have the snail thing? Well no, I don't think learn. Uh but I think, you know, a I think it would be better for the game if they adjusted their balance schedule to be a lot faster, yeah. And also, no, and I th I th and again, 
I don't, I think, um, I think Valen, okay, that is a, a debate tactic user. I think it slightly misrepresents the problem. I think the actual problem is that Arena are not aggressive enough with their changes, right? Do you think that would be a fair thing to say? It's not that they don't know what is overpowered. I think they're very well aware of what's overpowered, right? But I think what Arena needs to do is like really go hard, right? And really like say, you know what? Rev's damage, that's too much, okay? We should probably reduce that, okay? And right, really kind of... Take a hammer to it, you know? And then if it needs to get buffed, you can tweak it maybe a few weeks later. So you know what? We but we, we went too hard on those poor Revenant players, man. We gotta give them a bit more. Right? We gotta give them give them a little bit more. Okay? Wait, the fuck is this guy? The fuck is this shit? Hang on. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. yeah. I think the, the content of the balance is more important than the timing of the balance is what I was getting. Okay, hang on. One, one moment. Just shut the fuck up. Oh my okay. God. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess like, um, I don't think we'll ever get individual adjustments like that. I don't think we'll ever see like, say Revenant getting knocked down by itself. Um, if they were going to do that and they were going to tackle it as harm as that, I think that they would actually look at all the classes that are doing that in the current meta. Um, and then they would try and do that, which again is like a big rework. And that's what you've said already. So like imagining that. They would rework all the power creep across the board. If they just nerf the power creep, by the way, do you not think that then it's then going to have to be like, okay, so if we can't kill stuff as quick, then we then have to look at it from the defensive creep, right? So all this stuff that has crazy boon uptime, crazy protection uptime, obviously the current uh, condition, uh, Mirage is the, the prime example of that, and Chronomancer. They have like crazy um, chaos armor uptime, which triggers the... Uh, the trait that gives them four seconds of protection every single time they get Chaos Armor. I think, I can't remember exactly what it's called. But um, again, and then immunity uptime, like using Signets with Blood Inscriptions. You've got like uh, evasion windows all over the place with Mirage Cloak. Um, it, exam it's just an example. But then they'd have to come down and obviously tackle all of that defensive capability because if you can't kill things very quick, but they're able to out-sustain you anyway with all that utility kit, then that pulls for another meta rework and they're not going to do one without the other they're not going to bring down the power creep and then ignore the defensive creep as well um and then if they bring that down do they then look at the healing creep and they go okay well damage is a lot lower but people can't kill each other because the healing creep is just so goddamn high i mean hollow smith on, runes, by the way yeah you know hollow smith hollow smith with uh healing turret or just core energy with healing turret i mean hollow smith is probably a better example because it has so many blast finishes you could even take the prot hollow with the um uh, so you take Healing Turret, you take Thumper Turret, uh, you have Holographic Shockwave as well, so you can basically double blast both of your turrets in your water field and then blast it again for extra area healing. There's so many like methods of like getting yourself to full heal off of like one skill pretty much. Um, even if you just like, you know, Hollow Leap 2 and holo uh, Holographic Shockwave and use your blast on your heal turret, you'll heal yourself to full. So that in itself, if you're not doing as much damage, is going to be detrimental if you're against the Hollow Smith. So you literally have to pull all of these different things together. Like you have to tackle the power, tackle the defense, tackle the healing, and do one big rework. Yeah, and yeah. that in itself, I can't really see them doing for a long time, which is why I don't think they'll ever just tackle a single class like that and say, Revan is doing way too much damage, let's nerf it down. Because that will just start, that will start a chain reaction, you know? And they're not prepared for that. Well, uh, well that, that's kind of what I was alluding to, right? You know, it's, it's the fact that, you know, that. That when I when I was talking about balance patch aggression, right? Like be, being really going hard on these, like really, you got to hit everything, right? Otherwise, if you so suppose they only hit one class, right? Suddenly that class is like complete trash compared to all the other ultra power creep classes that we currently have in the meta, right? Like, so when you nerf something, you can imagine like in in you know in arena net vision, like we're nerfing this, like why would we do that? If we nerf this class, it's going to be terrible compared to everything else, right? Uh, whereas it's more like everything else is way too good, so everything needs to get nerfed, right? Which is very difficult uh, to, to pull off, right? And with with the resources that are currently being allocated to, to PvP and like maybe restrictions placed on the developers, like how much can the devs actually do in one go, right? So I, we, we do find ourselves in a very difficult situation, I think, right? Uh, with with with, uh, with regards to, you know, just, just do it, Arena. Just balance the game. What are you doing? Come on, just balance the game. So it, it's 
it's the case of like, would you be willing to put up with like a few, maybe like a few seasons of your class being trash if you eventually get to a good balance? Like, because if Aridna isn't willing to do the mega, like the balance true apocalypse where everything gets annihilated, okay? Then the only way they can do it is by just hacking away at a class every three months, right? Uh, until the game is eventually balanced, right? So that's you know we we it, are in a bit of a a bit of a tough spot, right? I'm I'm just not sure how much they devs do can they, do. They'd have to change their uh, their update schedule. Um, I know for a fact that there is a strange reason why they can't do changes as frequently as they want to, and it's essentially that they can't do uh, releases at the same time um, because of how they structure their updates. So PVE is at like one point, PVP, world v world. They don't, they don't do them together very often. And the adjustment, sometimes when it comes to balance, they can, but if they were doing like a big PVP rework, that would in no way coincide with PVE changes or, uh, or world v world. Like it's, it's kind of weird like that. I know that. Um, and that's something I've, I've been, uh, I've been told. So uh, if they were going to do such a big change like that, I don't think that they would spread it over like say three months. Um, I think that they would have to kind of pull their resources like they have already into the system team, systems team, um, and they would have to essentially work everybody on a very, very quick scale to get that uh, that that whole rework done. And they wouldn't. I don't think that they would let one class suffer without the other changes coming in in very quick succession. I think it would have to be every couple of weeks or something if they did that. Uh, but that's kind of maybe over expectant. I don't know. Every, I mean, every couple of weeks will be certainly an approach to doing it uh but uh, you'd see four changes in a sing in a season i would quite happily throw away a season or two if it meant that yeah. there was going to be for a the greater good change that completely right? yeah exactly. for the greater exactly. good exactly <laughs> right yeah. so, i don't know that it, you know, certainly could be certainly could be pretty good i think um i, I but it, it's just again arena has a history of Listening to vocal minorities, shall I say, and and again, I, I think they are in a way. I know this sounds ridiculous, but, <laughs> Mirage video. but trust me, right? Trust me on this one. Um, if if something like this happened, like a true balance apocalypse, do you know how much people would complain about this? Like, do you know how much people would complain? A lot. Okay, a hell of a lot. There, there will be uproar. Don't so, no. You don't I think mean, so? people are already complaining like as it is right now, so <laughs> it's not going to be any different. <laughs> how would that be different? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm just, I, in a way, I'm just trying to play yeah, devil's advocate like, in a sense. Take, for example, like the PVE meta. No one really knows what the, like, the optimal thing is, right? So it's kind of actually refreshing because people are playing non-meta stuff. Um, like, that's what it would be like if PVP was shaken up. People would be playing a bunch of like meme stuff because they can because no one knows what actually is good. But when the meta gets settled in after like years... You know, you've been playing the same thing over and over. Well, it gets, you know, basically people optimize it to like the T and it gets like, it gets very stagnant. So I think it would be good even if the meta was like crazy, like broken for like a couple months. But you don't think that's already it, it wouldn't be broken, but it would be like definitely a lot different, you know, maybe a little bit broken. Something I do like that they have been doing recently is reworking classes. Uh, I think refreshing uh, traits or utilities of classes. Uh, it's really nice. Yeah, uh, and examples. Yeah. Well, well stuff, well, stuff like Rev, right? I mean, Herald got massively changed, for example. And that... Dead it, Eye, what, Dead Garage, Eye? or Mesmer in general. Yeah, Corona. Yeah. But do you not think they changed Dead Eye because obviously everybody was complaining about it and how it operated? Well, they actually... I, I don't know so why, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know why, they, uh, why they did the changes to Dead Eye. Well, it was not fun before. Like, it literally didn't do anything. No, and it's they made not it that it wasn't right? fun before. It was that, like, you could perma stuff and yeah. one-shot. But the thing is, they now you can just one-shot people, and you don't even need to perma stealth. You can just... Well, you, you basically go in stealth. You attempt to one-shot. If that misses, then you attempt again, right? Like, it's actually worse than before. Uh, well... Well, yeah, I mean, you know, regardless of that, it is actually happening, right? Like, the, you know, the, the classes do get reworked. But the, I think that the trouble with that is that if, if suppose they rework one class every balance patch, which hasn't really been happening, to be fair. Like, it's, it's been in a few of them. That's, we have a long road ahead of us, if that's the case, right? There's a whole, there's a whole lot of classes. I mean, that, classes. that's nothing that is prioritized. It's just something nice to have, you know, go through everything that has been in the game for a long time and shake them up. It would be interesting to see.
Mm. Yeah. I think we we've kind of uh, uh, well I suppose this has kind of exhausted the the uh, the the balance topic. I think at, at this point we've we've reached our conclusion. Just nerf everything, guys. Nerf the hell out of everything <laughs> and you know what? If people get triggered, who the fuck cares? Just absolutely just, just destroy it, okay? Like burn it to the ground well, like what things and build it say it from the ashes. No, but the easiest thing would be if they had a possibility to do like World of Warcraft where they could just Squish. tone down the uh, the numbers. Yeah, start <laughs> squish completely. And then you bring uh, down the defensive of the the bunker, so to say, and then you start slowly building up from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the smartest. I mean, they, they brought they brought power and healing down across the board, didn't they? They like literally went from like millions down to like doing like eight k again. So like people mm -hmm. were literally hitting like three, four, five million in raids, oh, like as a damage over time um, throughout the like a boss fight, and then they brought it down to like eight k, ten k. Now it's back up to like thirty k, I think, but. That's a slow increment. So it's a prime example of what they could do. Uh, well, I mean, th that is slightly different, though, because I mean, what they did there—it's—it's—it's it, it's, it's a bit different in WoW because in that in that instance, like they did that purely because like the numbers cosmetically were getting a bit ridiculous, though, right? Like it, it's not exactly the same thing. Like it, it was just it was just stupid, right? True. You had like three million crits, like two million DPS. That that's just ridiculous, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. in in this particular instance, you you would have to take a bit more care to it. You couldn't just say, you know what, every single tooltip in the game, just divide the number by two. Easy game. Um, th there's a, yeah, I don't think yeah. I, I don't think they have the you know, possibility to do it, but that would be a dream scenario too. Well, you think you, well, you think that would be pretty good? Just literally just halve everything. Would, would... Yeah, like just go. I don't know how they would do it, but I mean they would have to go through all traits and stuff. I don't know how that would be way too much work for them, but yeah, it would be yeah. a dream scenario. Yeah, it will be. There will be. You know, well, I mean, fair enough then. Uh, but of course, there's other things to consider for uh, as well. I think, it, for example, scaling. Like scaling. You know, if you just halve the the numbers on everything, um, the way the scaling and the, the way it would interact with stats would also change in perhaps slightly unpredictable ways, right? Uh, and that, there's you know, one thing that I have issues with. It's like how they split skills, for example. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, they cannot really revamp traits how they are. Only numbers like uh, percentages or numbers or cooldown you know mm. but they cannot revamp a whole trait to something else uh, you can take instant reflexes for a thief for example in pv it's uh, lower cooldown it's uh, evade when you reach 50 percent hp and in pvp it uh, got changed to 90 seconds uh, but i would want them to completely change the trait itself to do something else but i don't think they have the possibility to do do that well, they did rework a necro trait recently, didn't they? Devouring darkness. Though they introduced that, like, so in PvP. It yeah, but that one exists in. Yeah, it works PvP. everywhere. Yeah, it works everywhere. Just the numbers different. It just corrupts less boons yeah. in. Um, it corrupts yeah, less boons uh, in PvP. That's all. Yeah, because then they could tweak a lot more. Right now, they just they can just tweak numbers. They, they talked recently about um, removing passives from the game. But since they cannot revamp the trait itself, what it does, they can only increase the numbers, which I find problematic. I I rather have them completely revamp the trait to do something else instead of just then, increasing not, the cooldown. You have to make the whole trait line again. Is what you're saying? No, just that, you, you, just that specific trait. Just that specific trait. You're saying, but they can't do that. Yeah, they can't. Well, they so. they so yeah, but so if. I think they can, okay, but they. Sorry, I, th okay. I think they can, but they won't. Um, it's just they they want um, the, the traits okay. to be consistent. Uh, across all the games, and I, 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 I mean, I, I guess I'd slightly disagree there. I think it's fine if it's like that, but I mean, like for example, the trait you're talking about, like the um, in acrobatics, right? Like the the, yeah, the, yeah, the free evade exactly. trait, like it's irrelevant yeah. in PV in, in say um, in PVE, right? So uh, yeah. I, my my solution for that would be just like com just rework the trait. It's irrelevant there, so just completely change it. And yeah, like the the passive stuff is a bit you know silly, and they are very uninteresting, right? Um, so um yeah the the, the you know the ch reworking traits that are uninteractive or boring yeah i think that is a ch it should be a pretty high priority in my opinion um for for arena to do because you know some traits just kind of suck and they're not that fun uh to use you know that's that's just true uh and especially if they're not really relevant i mean I, it, look yeah, you know the balance in <laughs> the balance in pve you know at the end of the day it's just <laughs> like like uh, I do say this. I say this all the time. Just play whatever you want, right? Like the game is not hard enough to require. Um, the the game is not hard enough. Well, or rather, the bosses bosses don't have enough hit points that the word viability has any meaning in 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 PVE, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna say that on stream. Okay, like if you can't beat a boss on a certain class, 
you are trash. Okay, there you go. I said it. Uh, yeah, it's not even. It's not even if you are trash. You can basically play anything, and it will be fine, probably ish. Okay, as long as you know what you're doing. Okay, it's only. <laughs> It's only when you get to PvP where it's, it's actually important, right? Suppose you really want to role play as, as a certain class. Yeah, then you can have some problems, right? Um, you know, if you, I really want to play my Ventari Rev healer, you know? Like, well, okay, well, you're shit out of luck, dude, okay? Uh, <laughs> but... You know, that's where that's where it's actually important to have some some balance right because you're you're because if you you know the ai isn't going to play a better build than you you know but if you play pvp the other guy's going to play a better build than you then you're going to lose uh and that you know, unless you're way better than them then you can still win but i don't mind guys okay you can still win in pvp uh but yeah unless you're a mirage wow and then it's too easy then mirage is like easy mode right is that yeah, is that what, it, what you're trying to say? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah. I, I didn't really think that through. Yeah? Okay. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. But Mirage is overpowered. Yeah. Yeah. Mirage is overpowered. Mm. Sendonor agrees with me, by the way. Oh. I'm just saying. What? Oh. Uh, I don't agree not, Maybe not everything that I said, but he does agree that it's an obnoxious class. No, I dislike that guy, that's all. Yeah? Oh, cut, dude, don't, do not make me scroll up in this fucking <laughs> chat. Oh, you're right in that shit. All right, I will find it and I will prove it. So just a fucking minute, dude. Just a minute. Like, the way that you counter Mirage is way more fun than the way that you counter Deadeye, so, like, I would, I would delete, I mean, I wouldn't delete Deadeye, I would just revert it back to the, Delete like, it. Nah, dude. Here we go, chat, I've just posted it, okay, I've just proven it. Oh, shit. Oh, Half shit. midnight last night. Exposed. Remove Deadeye and fix this retarded class, same yeah. goes for Mirage. <laughs> Uh, that I need All to right. be defeated. It's an abomination. Ab ab <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. it's stupid. Let's yeah. remove it. Wow. Oh dear. Syndrome exposed. Leaked DMs. Here we go. Can't boys. be seen agreeing yeah. with the monkey, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna say, nah, Mirage is fine, man. Like, don't know who this kid is, man. Like, he gave me five hundred gold guy? for it. <laughs> dude, those are forged DMs. Forged. You fake. guys know I would do what anything do for mean? gold, so it's like chuck it. Ch you just check it out, bro. I could turn on the screen share right now and prove it. Yeah, but you Actually, can no, show I, the yeah, I, I can show the five hundred gold I got from you as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't even have five hundred never mind. Oh man, that's fucking good. Dude. Whatever, dude. That's fucking good. Alright, I, I think Whatever, do, do we have any more comments on balance? I think we've kind of exhausted that. I, I didn't want to t talk about uh, what, what, what quite a popular thing actually um, to to talk about as well. And that's kind of other game modes, right? But does anyone have anything else to say about, with regards to balance? Do you think we kind of exhausted the uh, the the balance discussion with regards to PvP and and uh, just you know finish well, telling a small how thing and that's oh, yeah, that's like um, I hate them doing changes to actual good skills like they're removing the skill for a complex um, gameplay um, mm. blinding powder being one or um, short uh, heart seekers or burning speed like just stupid changes for no reason you're just removing good things from the game mm. yeah so the, well what you mean with regards to with the the stuff with the um uh, the swiftness, right? The swiftness changes and super speed and stuff mm. like that? Or do you mean like facing the camera down and then doing that? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, when you do short heart seekers, uh, you cannot do that anymore when you're tilting the camera. Yeah, Same yeah. with burning speed yeah, on yeah, bosses. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. Irrelevant change, in my opinion. Why would you do something like that? It, it, it's because they're trying to make the game like better for casuals because mm. there's less complexity. Yeah. Same with blinding powder. You're removing synergy with uh, stacking stealth or... Uh, it makes it more clunkier to use. For what reason? Yeah, I, that that's a frustration w that a lot of players have across all the gamers. Really, the uh, the quote unquote dumbing down of the of of, of the game in general, right? Like making it um, no. more simplistic and less mechanically uh, complicated, right? Uh, so yeah, well, well, there you go. Uh, I suppose that you know that that's a general frustration that a lot of people have, and it is unfortunate. But I mean, yeah. Uh, Valen's right. Uh, that's we know the reasoning, and that's very unlikely to change. Sorry about that one, guys. Uh, that that's probably not going anywhere. Yeah, it's just you know, casuals. You got to make it good for casuals, okay? Uh, but anyway, what I want to talk about, you know, if we've done an hour and twenty-four on balance. Obviously, just, yeah, wasn't wasn't intended to go that long on on the first topic, but <laughs> never mind. Okay, it, it's it's a hot one, guys. It's a hot one. Okay, it really is. Um, so. Uh, we have a game mode currently, Conquest. This is what everyone plays pretty much, okay? We did have 2v2 for a while, okay? And I think it was very well received. But 
Do you think ArenaNet should stay focused on Conquest? Because personally, I think it's actually a pretty good game mode. I, I, I actually really like Conquest, to be honest. I think it's a really intricate uh, and fun game mode to actually play, especially in, in a team context as well. But some people, and well, quite a lot of people, feel that, um, the, you know, Conquest is boring, stale, rubbish. Okay, we need 2v2. We need 3v3. Do you think those that type of game mode, more of a deathmatch um, uh, death game mode, will be more suitable for, for Guild Wars 2, for the Guild Wars 2 player base? And Absolutely. Would it, oh, because, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it's an MMO, and, like, the whole point of, like, MMOs is, like, creating builds. But a lot of builds are not even viable because they don't work in Conquest. And when they came out with Stronghold, we saw, like, a bunch of, like, uh, like healer builds to like heal NPCs. That was really interesting. But like for sorry. Permastel builds. Yeah, yeah permastel. <laughs> like it, it's just like interesting. And then for a two V two, like there's a bunch of different builds that like become viable or at least like what Firebrand Scourge, of, like, same same Firebrand Scourge, dude. Like I mean uh, it wasn't really like anything else became viable. Yeah, but that's like a balance issue on that like well, yeah, but then, I'm, okay, so then that brings me to the fact that Ben has already said that they would not be applying an individual balance to 2v2. So if 2v2 got released, it would be... Yeah, but, like, say, for example, like, I'm playing Necromancer. Like, in the case of, um, like, say I'm playing Reaper, right? Like, normally you would take um, Chill to the Bone as Reaper, right? But in 2v2s, actually, Lich is better because you can't get, like, focused by five people, right? It's, like... It makes other skills like useful, and I think that's really interesting about like different game modes. Agreed. Actually, I have a few things. I, I would love uh, to have two v two eighties once a week at least. Um, I, I don't know if it's any harm to have it. Like people will get synergy for five v five eighties, two v two instead of just going into duo Q ranked. Um, you know, fire and scourge uh, synergy. Uh, another unpopular change I would love to make is to delete unranked and uh, actually revitalize uh, hot join. Like you see no love for hot join and it has been there since the start of the game. I remember when everyone did hot join. Um, make that unranked instead and, and put ranked queue only. That's so what the I issue, like, would like. The issue that Ben has again fed to me is that the, PV, the size of the PvP community doesn't really sustain a model to have multiple game modes. Uh, there's not really enough people playing Conquest already, so if you introduce, like, say, 2v2, 3v3, capture the flag, fucking, I don't know, seek and destroy, all these, like, opportunities where you could, you know, play different PvP modes, chances are that other game modes would not uh, do as well, or, like, Conquest, for example, would possibly lose out on the majority of its, uh, its player base, and therefore, your queue times then double, triple, quadruple, and it just effectively doesn't see play. Uh, so I think that was the main concern initially with uh, introducing another uh, permanent game mode. Um, or, I don't know if that's true though. Yeah, if you looked at the 2v2 AT or the special tournament that came up, did you see how much people actually played the 2v2? That was... Yeah, there was like 800. There was, there was 800 yeah. people that was playing yeah. that 2v2. Yeah. It's way more than we will ever see in 5v5 AT. Yeah. Well, uh, and I think that's what, um, in this hypothetical, I think we're talking about a situation where ArenaNet moves away from Conquest, right? And says, you know what? Conquest, we had a good run, you know? And then we d we just do only Deathmatch, for example, right? Um, and just move away. I think, yeah, I think the, the concerns about population for uh, dividing players amongst um, more than one game mode are legitimate. I think that's a legitimate fear. Um, but I think we were talking about, like, imagine if Conquest was kind of, you know what? That's boring, okay? We're doing something else. Let's go just kill each other. Like, I don't mean to bring this back to balance, but I think, like, balance is a bigger issue with population than, like, the number of game types. Like, if you just get the players back with good balance, like, it doesn't matter, like, if you split the population. Because a lot of players, I mean, are not going to play Conquest anyways. So you're just going to, you're going to probably increase the population if you have another game mode that is kind of like parallel to um, another one, right? Like if I'm a 2v2 only player, I might like, if there's only ATs for 2v2s, I might do like PVP in between. Right? Yeah, that's or, what that's what I think as well. Like if you add 2v2 ATs on a rotational base, 
maybe they will be like, oh, a lot of World vs. World players, they start doing 2v2 ATs and they'll be like, oh, wow, we can do 5v5. Maybe we start doing that as well. You get more people to the Conquest game mode as well. Yeah, as long as they don't compete with one another. So, like, if you're saying that they do them, like, you know, say a Saturday, one, once a week, just to, like, as a trial, you then do get to see the game mode in play that people will use on a regular basis, but it's not necessarily going to force people away from Conquest because it's not going to exist for long enough to actually be that. As long that as you don't add a, a 2v2 queue, then no. As long as you have 2v2 yeah. ATs, that, that wouldn't affect ranked queue, I think. Yeah, like more frequent PvP games uh, mm. instead of just Conquest and ranked Conquest. But please, if you're gonna, if Ben, if you if that's even a thing, please change the UI first because I can tell you right now that actually trying to go through that list of like games that they, they were just they were just mixed and matched like what they said pretty much exactly the same thing and the only like difference was a little fucking like two v two in the corner or some shit. So if you if you could change the UI before you do that, would be great because then I don't have to I don't have to like scroll through like a hundred different. Uh, ATs when I expect it. Uh, careful with uh, careful with UI, uh, Jaw. You know, like where's Swiss, for example? That's, Swiss. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, best Ben doesn't Ben doesn't want to hear the word Swiss. Yeah. <laughs> Swiss. What's your favorite kind of cheese? <laughs> oh well, there you have it. Is, yeah. is Swiss really that important, though? Yes. Yeah. Sure. In, when in ATs, MAT, MAT like, whatever, like it, yeah. it's really important. Yeah, for sure. Or the special tournaments ATs. as well. Think, yeah, daily 80s, maybe not, but... I think not necessarily Swiss, but it's more like um, best of one finals in monthly AT is uh, a bit silly, stupid. right? For example. Right, like right? for the monthly yeah, AT, AT, that's important, but like how much yeah. development is going into like such a small portion of the actual content in the game? Well, not much. Like, it's, 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 not one, it's like one or two hours per month. You know, how many teams get in, like... Versus how many teams play, uh, I mean, I guess probably not that many teams play daily ATs either, so. I mean, I guess it's not essential, but I, I think uh, having a best of one for a, a very prestigious event is a bit, is a bit, bit silly. Monthly final should definitely be best of three. Yeah. I, I would even say that maybe the final could be best of five and the Semis, semifinals yeah. could be best of three. Uh, that, that was what I wanted to do with the MCT because I felt that just seeing somebody go down to like maybe a tiny mistake um you know or maybe like they, they realize their comp isn't good into whatever their comp is having that map. opportunity for adjustment would be great uh, yeah and the map the map choice might not favor their their composition they might not have really thought that through they want an opportunity to change on a different map whatever like again that, that's obviously something that's really beneficial so they really should do that they really really uh, should adaptation for the next map and stuff it's a lot of potential yeah definitely yeah Oh yeah, but then we've we've wanted that for a long time, and I, Ben said to me like in June last year that he he was hoping Swiss would be done by now. So it's it has I think it's dragged over a little bit. But then I think there's been a lot of projects that have been lined up uh, alongside it, which have obviously resulted in uh, the changes not happening. And again with the system team like merge, that's happened since then I think. So like that was like a few months after he even said that. So. God knows what they've had thrown into their, their line of work that they now have to compete with to even get to the point where they could do Swiss or focus on Swiss. I don't know. Yeah. Doesn't bode well for all the uh, the world versus world fans in chat. You know, we, you, better, you guys might have to wait a little while for alliances. You know, maybe you'll get them in 2020, okay? Just chin up, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, also, Valun, even if it's a, a small, uh, like, niche uh, thing that they're um, developing, it's still one of the biggest streamed... Uh, Things like when I stream, yeah, when I stream monthly AT, uh, when we were playing or whatever, I have I had thousand viewers. Like that's that brings people into the game as well, or people who want to try PvP. I was just saying because like Teapot, he was making like a point where it's like, uh, well, Swiss needs to come before two v twos or whatever you are. Wait, no, no, know, it's no. like I didn't say that. Well, you, well, Josh said something about like the two v two UI and then. Teapot said, "Like, oh, but we need Swiss first. No, 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 no. I, no I, okay, I, I was, I was making a humorous, I was making a humorous point about how you got to be careful for asking for UI changes because it might end up like Swiss and take oh. like a year and a half. Oh, yeah. 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 But two I mean, v two changes would be in the UI anyway. I, I, I think they like talked about the Swiss. UI changes and Swiss since eighties came out, and that was two thousand and seventeen January, I think, something like that. That's when eighties started, and first monthly was uh, in July or something." 2017. Yeah, because yeah, I had partnership by then. I was actually able to um, spectate and cast. Ah, oh, wow. 
Some so it stuff. should actually have been out. It's been a long time. Yeah. You, so do you think 2v2 or Swiss is better for the health? Of I think both. I, I don't I, oh, I yeah, don't see obviously. a problem of them having 2v2 ATs. Like they already did did that. I don't, And it was populated as hell. Add that on a daily basis or a weekly basis, whatever. Mm. But, and well, especially I mean, we've got to be careful not to have too much content though, because then the Reddit trolls are going to be very upset. I mean, TOL There's coming back. There's never too much content. Dude, everyone is complaining. PvP just got a new map. PvP. Rah, rah, rah. We finally have fucking Tournament of Legends back that is just literally a recycled fucking event that's from like years ago. 2016 and now, uh, November. Yeah. And it's not like it's a brand new fucking event. They've just recycled and turned the server back on. And that means that now we have something else to do, but that's not okay. Well, the world is like, fucking, where's our reliances? Like, dude, you want to give too much to PvP now? Like, well, it's probably bad for PR, you know what I mean? We're in Guild Wars too, dude. Everyone in every game mode hates every other game mode, okay? That's something that you need to, uh, you need to. But then again, <laughs> I don't know, Jaw. I don't know. I've seen you in Twitch chat saying PvE Resident Sleeper. Huh? Yeah, but that's a meme. And the world, I mean, the world yeah. is all hated. <laughs> Yeah. I think I'd probably like Guild Wars 2 PvE more if I didn't already, uh, or if I hadn't already experienced the PvE elements on Mythic uh, WoW, because WoW kind of set the bar for me as like really challenging raid content. And then when I when I started doing uh, raids in, in Guild Wars 2, I really was not uh, happy. Like I I remember doing my training raids, and I, I I remember I did Sabbath of Bombs for the first time. It didn't have Taco or anything. Just memorized that it was like you know the sun rotation, and then. It was, it was relatively straightforward. And everyone was like, wow, that's really hard. How did you do that? And I'm thinking, well, the amount of things you have to remember in Mythic raiding on WoW is like tenfold compared to what you need to remember in, in Guild Wars 2 raids. And that it, I felt that PvP was more challenging and that PvP questioned my game knowledge more than what I was experiencing yeah. in PvE. And that's why I think the PvE is resident sleeper. It's not, it's not resident. It's just kind of like, it's not my thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you want to bring this to be up again? Well, I mean, I don't know. Sorry? That, that, I was. I, I do you remember that hundred CM we did? That was a, a bit. That was a bit difficult, wasn't it? <laughs> do you remember that? I mean, dude, I, there's a difference between like throwing yeah. me into a hundred CM when I haven't done it in six months versus like if I did it every week. Like, come on, man. Like, come on. But <laughs> isn't it kind of funny I mean, though that it, I, I would we? I would say that hundred CM is actually sometimes even harder than raid. Harder than raids, yeah. It's the hardest <laughs> content I think in the game. Hundred CM is pretty difficult, dude. It is, it is pretty difficult to be fair. Yeah. That, Depending on your uh, uh, fucking affixes as yeah. well, dude. Like I mean, it can get really fucking spicy. So I, I I'm not knocking it. It's just I don't think that it's as hard as WoW, and it, it didn't match up to my expectations. So <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. I don't worry about it. But no, yeah, it, it's just um, it, it. yeah. <laughs> uh yeah i don't know it's it when it comes to yeah the tournament legend stuff yeah it's, the community reaction is a bit ridiculous but to be honest it's only like five guys right like if you read that post like sort by controversial you know what i mean it's just i don't know um i haven't even looked at it yeah, but yeah, it you, be, you, look, you've got like bigger. five people saying yeah pvp is fucking trash but then everyone else is like very much like yeah dude, oh, wow we're gonna get like, gotta get my team together man okay uh yeah there, there are a lot of like straight up downvoted by like 30 percent like it's literally at a 70 percent upvote ratio and all it is is a fucking pvp event it's literally a link to the patch note or, or the page the news page that says tournament of legends is coming back it's not even worth downvoting and the fucking community is like pvp what downvote do not like it's like come on man it's just exposure let people see it yeah but, uh, and yeah they're, they're, you know there's uh, absolutely and that, that is that is a bit that is a little bit silly isn't it let's be honest here um, how is it gonna be though is it gonna be a net casted or it's i haven't people, no, it's just all. Team, okay so. they're not doing okay. they're not doing their own thing ben ah. said that maybe they'll they'll chuck a host over to somebody who's why can't you host, <laughs> why can't you why can't you cast it on the in a channel instead? i could do if i wanted to but then i wouldn't be able to say fuck piss shit balls you know and cuck. not get any subs or money well, yeah. well, to be honest honestly 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 <laughs> the exposure the exposure would be enough for me because there would be a, a fuckload of people that have no idea who I am who would find out who I am, right? That's fine for me. I don't need the subs and the donors and shit while I'm doing that. I would happily do that. I offered to. Actually, I, I got an email and I, I responded to it saying, yeah, i do it. But then I found out that they weren't doing it on the official channel and they had no, uh, no plans to do it on the official channel. And when I mentioned that to Ben, Ben actually said to me that maybe he would prefer that people did it on their own channel so that they have the freedom to say that shit. So... I would do it if it was offered to me, but it's more about that people can't even use like one of my emotes in channel because the Pepe is a fucking hate symbol. <laughs> so what, you know, Pepega literally can't even be in the chat. It, what, can you imagine? Like I literally got to deal with like the, the fucking arena net mods and body my chat. My chat is cancer. 
Yep. So there's there's absolutely no way that it would go forward. Absolutely not. So well, no way. Another another thing. I, I mean, I'm I'm not sure what you guys would think about this, but I think it's kind of crazy that only Arena Net partners can spectate games, right? Like that, yeah, like what, I, I what, agree. What? I I would want to have yeah. that back again, so I can actually cast MATs. It would yeah. actually. I, I know a lot of people enjoy my cast, so I, yeah, I would want to do it again. But yeah. uh, Ben, he can't give me that, so yeah. it's only partners. It, it's very odd Shouldn't to have me fucking that you know the, win traded. You know, <laughs> it's very weird to me that, um, well, it, it, ArenaNet knows that most of their player base doesn't really venture outside of the game that much, right? Like, uh, not a... Yeah, they would, they would be able to learn if they could spectate yeah, yeah. as well. Which would... So why not have this why feature not? enabled for for all the all the players, right? Like, because it's in, it's literally in the game, right? It, it, I could do it right now. There's an AT going that. I can go and watch some I know intense why. PvP action, you know? Why? You what, know what? why? Wait, do, no, I don't actually know why. When somebody spectates a game, they actually count as a player within that map. Yeah. So if you actually flood Stuff. the system with hundreds of people that are currently in that game, it then goes from being a 10-person server or, or like a 15-person server. Also, or, aren't or, you what, like what watching it in real time? You can have 20 people is... plus, the, plus the 10. So, and you can watch it in real time, yeah. So you'd have, it's a 30-person max server with all spectators. Right. They, they made. They basically made the system wrong. They should have programmed it to be like a, With a, delay. Like a replay system, yeah. like you yeah. spectating the actual man, like old HLTV. Ooh. Yeah, but I mean, they, they they did that in Guild Wars One, right? Like you never got to see something perfectly live. It was always something that was delayed by like five minutes or something, so you couldn't actually have an impact in the match when you were watching. You you could spectate the people that were in uh, Hall for Heroes or Hall of Heroes or whatever the fuck it was called. I used to watch PvP all the time. I used to see people specs and get ideas and shit like. They just don't do that in Guild Wars 2. I don't, I don't know why they had good systems in Guild Wars 1 and they thought, well, we've had a lot of success with these. Let's go with these ones that we've never tried and tested before and everybody's going to hate. Fantastic. You know, it's it's just really Especially game mods. I've heard so much good about Guild Wars 1 game modes. And oh, they were people amazing. People always mention it to me on my stream. I've never played it myself, so I don't know, but people always... You wouldn't be able to go back it. and find, like... You, you wouldn't be able to formulate it's an opinion now anyway because it's so outdated. Yeah, it's not yeah, as good as people say. It's rose-tinted. It's pretty fucking rose-tinted, um, <laughs> in my opinion, anyway. Uh, I, the concept of Hall for Heroes, or Hall of Heroes... I can't even remember what the fuck it was called. It was, it was HOH, Hall I think. Hall of Heroes. Hall of Heroes. Hall of Heroes, right. So it was... It, basically, you had a, a series of games, so you would qualify, and then you would compete for the altar, which was like a capture node, where you, you had to sustain the node with your team, and if you won that node, then, uh, so like, yeah, actually, no, it was, it was like a semi-final thing where then you, you held like an altar, then you hold another altar, and then you hold the, held the final altar. And if your mm -hmm. team uh, won the final altar, then give him to you... Me. Yeah, but it was like a three-way, so it was actually kind of like you yeah, could get... Yeah, it was bucks. three teams. Yeah. So, so like you, your team really had to excel, and it, it, you know, it pulled in a lot of theory crafting with like spirits that prevented res, and like having to, you know, kill, kill off the spirits so that you knew for a fact that um, you could use your revivals and shit like that. I mean, it's theory crafting, but um, the fact that everybody in the game uh, acknowledged who you were when you won the Hall of Heroes, like there was a, there was an alert that just went out to everybody yeah. saying so and so's team has won the Hall of Heroes. That's fucking premium shit, dude. That's like, holy shit, PvP is a big deal. Look at them, they're like celebrating. Like, what do we get now? <laughs> you know what I mean? You get like, a funny hat. Fucking find out who you won the monthly. You get a funny you know, hat and a statue. You don't even know who won the monthly. You literally don't even know who won the monthly. What, what is that about? Like, if, come on, so-and-so's team has won the monthly. Like, congratulations, exposure. You, like, you do get a statue, though. I mean, I'm yeah, not saying that that's like a big deal. I'm just Who's going to go to the PvP lobby that doesn't play PvP, dude? Who's actually going to go there and go, wow, look at those statues? Like, well, nobody. Well, who can, nobody who, who plays PvE is going to know. To, to be fair, like, who cares, uh, I mean, if you don't play PvP? Yeah, then, it's not right? a big deal. Like, the, the real issue is they need a spectate system. I thought it was prestigious. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it is prestigious, but the, the statues are pre prestigious as well. It's just that, look, yeah, do, do you, okay, um, for example, in Guild Wars 1, okay, do you think, like, the guy who's just doing his dungeons, um... Just that you know, farming fucking DOA gives a fuck who wins in Hall of Heroes. But they they wouldn't know what it was until it alerted on their screen. Then they'd see it and they go, "What the fuck's that? Yeah, they, oh, that sounds interesting. Just, Let me find out what that is." They, well, they probably still wouldn't care though. They they like people who don't play people who don't wait, play PvP, right? They just it, it's it, they don't really care. It's, about right. it. it's a, but it's I the think same. they had an idea like that before that they would uh, you know top right that it would say. Uh, these people won the monthly or something, and then you had a possibility to turn it off if you felt that it was too much. I think they talked about it before in all yeah, I mean, If you were brand new to a game 
and something popped up on your screen like X X's team has uh, killed this, like killed this like fucking boss or whatever the fuck. You might, because you're so curious, go and type that into Google. You might go, I want to find out what the fuck that is. I want to see if that's interesting. And it might introduce you to a game mode or to an element of the game that you wouldn't otherwise know about. Or right? add the statues in Lion's Arch or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah like... Put put them mm -hmm. in a, put them in all the main cities so that people go wow who the fuck are they and then maybe with the gizmos over their heads so they can actually see that they have like yeah these, let's put like, I hate gizmos. this dead game in Lion's Arch <laughs> I mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe maybe not that but you, you know account what I mean? names bring, bring account names children. maybe <laughs> yeah some some prestigious yeah, uh, I mean prestigious you can just it, alt right? and make the account names <laughs> yeah. So they did that with uh, uh, Guild Wars 1. Like, they got permabanned for, like, harassing Gil Grey with their, like, guild name. Hmm. When they won halls. Hmm. I'm not going to repeat what they said, but... <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I mean, I, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't, to be honest, I, I don't really mind either way. I, I just don't think it would really do anything. I don't think it's that important. I think there is a lot of prestige to winning, especially winning monthly AT, especially with your funny hat. Okay, I think the funny. I think if you want to attract people, you know, if people see um, people see uh, somebody one monthly AT going up in Lion's Arch in say I don't know, you know, one of the 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 hubs, the, you know, Mistlock Sanctuary, Queen's Terrace. They say, "What is this man's funny? What is this man's funny hat?" Okay. And they mouse over the funny hat, True. and they say, "Whoa, whoa!" Oh, no, a lot of I, I get a lot of yeah. whispers, and they're like, "What? Are the, yeah. What is that?" Yeah, yeah. See, where did you where did you get that? <laughs> How do I get this? How much yeah. do I have to pay? Yeah. Four hundred dollars. Yeah, no, not really. Yeah. Not. See, yeah. So I, I think that is. I I know. I don't. When when people <laughs> um um say there's no motivation to get good at PvP, I'm like, oh. Why would I get good at PvP? I I honestly just kind of stare at them and go like, "What are you talking about, man? Like, you go get your funny hat? Are you kidding me? It's like the best. It's literally the best reward in the game, easily. By the way, okay, it it is. There is nothing that is unique or unobtainable except the funny hat. So the funny hat is therefore by default True. the best reward in the game. Okay, so but when people complain like, "Oh, oh, you know, more rewards, please," and by the way, this is from PvPers. Not from PVEs most of the time. Um, uh, most PVEs consider the rewards in PvP to actually be very good, because they actually are, by the way. Lots of cash. Good. Get that fucking moolah, okay? Um, those people are idiots, okay? Because the, the rewards are actually insane, dude. You get uh, you get best of the best and funny hat. Nice. Let's go. I'm pretty sure the, the, okay. the ranked uh, reward track that dude. literally just updates with chess is actually mm -hmm. one of the most uh, profitable methods of obtaining gold in the game as well, right? Okay. Alongside okay. reward tracks. Like, mm, just, just getting your reward track... To get I, I, that's what you're yeah but about. i could have sworn that's one of the most profitable like mm -hmm. to actually get your chess and get your reward track simultaneously botting 80s or ah. botting rank. and 80s of course yeah bots that's you know that yeah you know that's why guys what you want to do is you want to go ahead and get yourself an alt account set up that bot it plays 3k games it doesn't get banned it's playing in the next season don't do that okay <laughs> don't do that okay and you know what class you can play it on mirage Jaw was right. Fucking new. Or scourge. Or scourge. Or scourge. Yeah. yeah. Dude, some of these AIs are really big brain though. Dude. I saw a, a Frosty showed me a clip. It was like chasing him around a rock. It was crazy. It yeah, was yeah, yeah. In NA. Okay, it was uh, insane. There was a bot that like uh, random dodged took or steal as well. Holy shit, dude. Outplayed. <laughs> the bot is just on another level. It, it wasn't random dodge. It's just because steal is an instant. But you know. Wow. Did the bot the bots are taking over you know you guys see that thing deep mind was uh, playing starcraft 2 the other day okay now it's going to play guild wars too soon okay it's soon the, the ai is going to win monthly at no huh? think about that one it, it's going to have godlike mechanics and it will you know we, is this actually have... happening i mean in this current meta i wouldn't be surprised if firebots could win yeah honestly <laughs> it's so dumbed down it's incredible yeah. <laughs> if, do they have they all focus one target and one shot it and then just they keep did like repeating. five chronos they could win. just do five mirage Five mirages of yeah, wow. The AI will take over. That'll be that'll be some good shit. Go. I genuinely believe you could probably put in a team of five mirages into unranked, and it would win the majority of games. If you if you, you put mean like say, mirages, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it would win the majority of low-rated games. It maybe even it, even in ranked, I think it would still do relatively well in like gold or whatever. Like maybe a couple of duo queues. Just put one on each, on one on close, one on far. You, you'd probably see some uh, one on east. <laughs> you probably see some pretty interesting uh, statistics from that, I think. I genuinely think so. Just from spamming skills, I think you could still do well. But... Mm. Because most people kill themselves in confusion and torment. Just, 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 I, just uh, I've killed myself many a time into a Mirage, dude. Many a time. Just by literally like not noticing I have 20 stacks of confusion and just like one skill, I'm like, boop! 
see you later I, i've done that so i mean i think most people who have dueled into a mirage at some point in time have done that so i think that people especially at low relo would do that okay well uh, another another thing i wanted to touch on a little bit we're kind of approaching the conclusion of the show but we've got a little bit of time left okay now this is uh, i think I've, i think i've had this conversation with, with jaw before actually uh regarding oh, no. what would revitalize the competitive scene within guild wars 2 and i believe you said money okay uh but uh... is it only money or will stuff like um tournament of legends kind of get the job done too right okay because tournament of legends an entire legendary weapon insane wow so much cash is that it's enough? actually more than one it's so the first place gets a choice of a second or a first gen the second place Boom. gets a choice of a first or second uh, sorry just the first gen third place gets a choice uh between gift of, gift of mastery and gift of fortune so and like 77 clovers or something ridiculous so they're all about like legendaries right obviously i, I don't know if people are aware of the reward structure or if this has changed recently i don't know if that's what it used to be uh i, I know for a fact obviously it wouldn't be the second gen because it hasn't played since the second gen i don't think Ben was saying that that's a new a, a new uh, thing that they've put in because of HOT release or something. I, I don't know. Um, uh, but, anyway, but, but Ben is exposing you. Apparently, second place gets a precursor. Yeah, that sounds how it used to be. Wait, yeah, what? that's how it what? always been. Yeah, I literally. Hold on, I'm googling this right now. Yeah. Oh. I'm ge I'm googling uh -oh. it right now. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's it's only a legend for first place. Yeah. That that sounds about right. I I literally read it like. Regardless, like it's is is getting first place good enough reward for? I mean, it, tournament I of legends is two two uh, like it's two times per year or something. I think Ben said it's not gonna. You, well, you oh, it like does say precursor. It does. It 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 debated me because it says your choice of any first generation legendary, and I just didn't finish the fucking I mean, well, sentence. It says exactly. precursor weapon. It doesn't matter like if it's a precursor or not. For second yeah, but, place, right? okay. First yeah, place I, is a legendary. So like. Teapot said, like, the, the best reward in the game is the gizmo or whatever. But, like, a legendary is not really unique. Anyone can get that if they just farm it up. So is that enough to make PvP competitive is, is the question. I think if you ever want the scene to start screaming again, if that's what we are looking for, then bring back um, all the ESL and the go force. The gems? You right? don't have to make big... No, the go force. Well, gems as well that existed in the gophers but gophers were like 600 euro uh for first place uh, every sunday and then the monthly was like 1600 uh, euro something um, so th which isn't of... even that much money yeah it's not that for, much for money. them to give out right it's yeah like, exactly really you don't have to bring back accounts <laughs> and stuff which will never happen but that's that's <sighs> one of the then you would get teams to actually care and start screaming and i'm not saying not every team doesn't scream right now that would actually bring back the seriousness in teams and sticking together, finding the best meta and stuff. So Go for it would be enough. What do that. we, what do we think about the uh, the big car debate? The <laughs> the old beetle, <laughs> the, be right? the beetle guy. The the event that had never taken place ever and uh, they'd never tested they they had no idea how this would go down with the community but there was uh, a little beetle race that took part over the space of fucking god knows how long I, I think it was like 10 weeks and they gave away like fucking 50k dude do we even know that they gave it away though wait well, is there wait, any what? proof that someone wait, actually got wait, caught what? no it, i'm not it, it was saying like, like there's like conspiracy here but like <laughs> Do we know who actually got not, not, Well, no, not yet. But still, okay, like, think about it. Just think about it, right? They're not willing to even put like a hundred fucking dollars into a weekly tournament, right? I mean, that's what? It's five and a bit grand over the space of a year, right? If they if they could do that on a weekly tournament, I think even a hundred dollars would incentivize people. I actually think that was the original idea behind ATs and monthly ATs um, to have cash in it after yeah. World. So they're willing to put 10 times that amount on one thing that lasts 10 weeks that they've never done before that doesn't really incentivize anybody to do anything else than fucking ride a fucking beetle in a certain lap. They didn't even have to come first. They didn't have to be competitive. They just had to get on a fucking mount and run and do something and then sign themselves up. It's 
Like the it, whole it was concept a, of that it was, was a just good like design so though, because they had to uh, play the game enough to get the beetle, right? If they're a new player. Well, they had to go and do the living world to. The, it was free yeah. to unlock the the mount it, as well. It's like, sort of like, they, 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 like getting invested in the game, so it's to a degree, a but idea. they. Arguably, people would have to buy the game to unlock the the mounts. They'd have to buy Path of Fire. Path of Fire was on sale, so yes, they got the sale price uh, of the game or whatever to anybody that wanted to try and compete. But then I don't think that somebody's gonna go, "Oh, I can get a car. I'm gonna go and fucking buy Path of Fire and then do this roll a bit." I don't, I don't know. I don't. Know. They're gonna have the stats on that. But the whole point is that they're willing to invest like 50k worth of sponsorship as well as cash prizes. You could have like 8k instead of taking the car. Um, they, they they're willing to do that on something that. Is a completely new initiative versus actually keeping something like PvP alive. Now, I, I know there's so many people that will go, PvP has been tried, tested, it failed, blah, blah, blah. But my argument is that you don't like, you wouldn't just have a child and whether the, you know, let's say the child has special needs, you're not just going to fucking lock it in a shed and just leave it to its own devices. You're going to try and look after it, <laughs> right? So PvP could actually deal, it could do with a little bit of help. Um, so, you know, as far as $100 a fucking week goes, it would be nice if we could get $100 versus the 50 grand you put on a roller beetle tournament. And that will keep PvP somewhat incentivized to scrim and formulate teams. People compete for real money. Real money for nothing is really nice. It, it, it inspires competitive nature. Not fucking riding a roller beetle for a chance where you don't even have to be competitive. I mean, that's literally fucking Guild Wars 2 community in a nutshell, isn't it? We don't want to be competitive. We just want all the rewards for doing nothing. Well, you Yay! didn't. Didn't you? Didn't you just kind of debunk your own point there, though? I mean, what? What do you think? Well, yeah, but I mean, what, P no, I PVP mean, players aren't included in that what? because we're the hatred of the community. We. You mentioned the word PVP on Reddit, and everyone's like, "See you later, downvoted." It's because we care. We're competitive. We're 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 elitist to to a degree because we you know we're all toxic as fuck. But that's what that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, well, do you not see that? We're competitive. We want we want some we want a competitive reward for our competitiveness. We if we don't have incentive, we don't have a competitive nature or a, com or a reason to be competitive. Well, and this is so, this is where it gets depressing though. Like you, you like Guild Wars two, but have you uh, have you considered that Guild Wars two doesn't like you? Um, th th this yes, I, 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 dude, the community hates me. No, I'm not talking I, about Guild Wars two. I'm talking Mirage about, video. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about the, uh, the actual players. I, I'm actually more about talking about the. Company. Oh yeah, both of them hate me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I got my first precursor in in like two, almost two years, like last week. No, no, no. Okay. Game hates uh, me as well. Okay. Yeah. No, no, what, what, I, what I mean by that is. I'm being facetious, I, dude. Yeah. I know exactly what yeah. you mean. I know. Like, I know. The, yes. I know. Of course. Uh, but just just yes. to, just to make yes. sure, like the 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 Beetle thing exists because that is the target audience that ArenaNet wishes to target, right? Okay. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. PvP, the, the, the kind of player that the, a PvP player is, is perhaps not exactly what uh, ArenaNet wishes to advertise to. Or, right? or not necessarily a competitive PvP, but like yeah. a casual. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's where you, where you start to have, you know, have, have problems. I mean, it's not much you have to do to uh, make the PvP community grow. And I, I don't know, I feel like you would uh, make everything better in Guild Wars if you made PvP grow. That's how I see it. Well, I think PvP is more watchable. Think... I think it, in terms of repetitiveness, I think it's it's much more replayable. No, but a lot of people are being toxic on forums and saying, don't play this game, it's garbage, PvP sucks, It's they don't care. World Wars World, same thing. If, if it doesn't people... get love. Yeah, but if, if it gave, uh, got love, maybe we would get better response mm -hmm. from those people and... Uh, uh, it, yeah. it's it's true but at the end of the day the type of game that arenanet seems to want is an open world casual game and there's not much uh, else there's not much space for anything else other than that right like the, the, i'm not i'm not totally convinced that um the goal is to actually grow pvp or grow raids or grow anything like that i think that the goal is to is to effectively like sell a lot of mount skins right uh, <laughs> you know agreed 100 uh, and and that's why they did it dude you know that for a fact oh, of course yeah but you know that i mean guys that's not me like roasting arena this is business right like welcome to reality yes, right this, this is just you know wake up you know this isn't sunshine and rainbows this is cold hard facts okay it, you know they want to make money dude okay and guild wars 2's niche if you will is um open world casual uh pve content right with well uh, casual story content really at the end of the day and so so i think even even if they you know 
trying to push for PvP in that environment is probably very difficult. In the same way that it's probably very difficult to push for, for anything that isn't casual story content, right? Um, or, you know, and mount skins. You know, do you know what? You need to get that PvP mount skin, man. That PvP beetle skin. Then, then you're going to be a business. You're going to have loads of players then, man. Loads of them. Uh, but yeah, that's... Yeah, that's is what it is. Like, if you look at the majority of the player base, they aren't they aren't playing um you know, they aren't playing PvP. Unfortunately, that's just that's just how it is, right? And uh, do I agree with with Cinder? hundred percent. Like, if the if the game was better balanced uh, and it was more friendly to uh, newer players because of that balance, then yeah, you would definitely have a lot more people playing it. But but would you have more people playing it competitively? Probably not. No, you wouldn't have more people playing it competitively. If, the only thing that would happen is that you'd have a lot more people in the mid low end, right? But you probably wouldn't increase. I, I actually agree. Like the only way you'll get more people at the high end is by adding money to the game. But the thing is, adding money to the game probably won't actually increase the overall casual player base, right? Which is what the no, I'm thinking more like people towards. coming from from other games into Guild Wars 2, and they go on the Reddit and they ask, "Hey, how is this game?" Um, I played World of Warcraft before. Is PvP okay? Everyone will be like, "No, this shit. Don't even play the game." <laughs> There's no way they're gonna try Guild Wars 2, even if they want to play PvE, World vs. World. Uh, and PvP. I, I don't know. I think I think uh, Guild Wars Two players have more loyalty to Guild Wars Two players than to WoW players. I think they'll talk well about PvP if it's in the context of like converting a WoW player. Uh, no, I, I don't know. If that's no. like too big of an issue. I, I do understand um, what you're um, uh, what you're saying there, Sindhu. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, um, mm -hmm. if if you know if the game was better, then you certainly will attract other. Um, other players to the game, but I mean, like a lot would have to change. Like, Teapot's such a white knight. What, dude? I was just like, I, I just spent like a, two minutes like throwing some serious low key shade at Arena. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I don't know about that one, dude. Uh, but no, never mind. Yeah, no, that, that yeah, it does make sense. And, and certainly, right. and yeah, Bick was fucking right, dude. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Like drawing, um, you know, uh, drawing uh, players from other other mmos certainly would be would be a, a, a very good thing and I, I think it's something that guild wars 2 is probably pretty good at right um to, to, mm. be, to be frank do you think uh like compared to a lot of other um mmos it has a lot of uh, quality of life and a lot of features that appeal to the, to, to a well, more modern gamer i think actually the game itself right it can pull in a player i, I agree with that it can pull in an mmo player. holding a player though is what's the problem but, right it, we, there's that. Uh, it doesn't do a good job at actually holding because it doesn't do a good job at actually introducing players to the game. I mean, the tutorial system is a big meme. Bick was right. Um, but when you look at the community, uh, if the player, like you say, is interested in PvP, the immediate response can scare somebody away. Um, even if somebody comes into a Twitch chat and says... Hey, I just moved over from WoW. I've just bought this game, or I've just downloaded it for the first time. I've just hit like fucking level twenty. Uh, I used to play PvP in WoW. Uh, I would really, really like to, you know, find out more about this game. Should I come play PvP? My my answer is always try it. If you're somebody that that played WoW, played PvP in WoW, the combat system is like crazy dynamic. It's really fun to play. There's like really fluid classes. Blah 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 blah. Um, at the top end, it's a little bit, uh, you know, a bit shaky, a bit spicy because of the rating and you know the the way that the balance works, but it's still really good play and you know you go a certain amount of time before you get to this point where you're like okay well i don't really have much to do and i say well you'll get like a year a year and a half before you even reach that point so my my response is always really positive but then there'll be people in the chat that will say oh uh this game is shit pvp sucks and they're the same people that have been playing conquest for six years right and they're the same people that have gone through all these ups and downs and all this shit and that they're, they're not willing to see a bigger picture of like welcoming somebody else into the community and like growing the game as a whole uh, so the community in itself can be its biggest fucking enemy. It can oh, yeah. be, it, it can it can kill off any vibe of actually growth of the game. So when everybody's like saying, "Oh, dead game, dead game," and then you see an opportunity to increase that community size, people bite themselves on the ass. And it's it's a lot a lot of that comes from Reddit, and it really does infuriate me because sometimes you know I'll go to Reddit and I'll try to help people out. I'll try to answer questions, blah blah blah. And the amount of times you see somebody just go straight into somebody that's brand new who just wants to get a little bit of information, and they've killed their their buzz immediately they just immediately fucking dispatch their buzz and it's like how the fuck do you expect this game to actually get any acknowledgement the game that you're playing and you know get the development response that you want as well because obviously the more people that play the game the more money the, the company has the more resource they might be willing to put into uh you know initiatives they, they just shoot themselves in the foot 
And we are our biggest, worst enemy. And I hate that. I hate that about the community. I really hate that. But sometimes we're great. If, the, if, the, if it's a PvE main, people come in like, oh, yeah, yeah, come fucking play with my team. Join my guild. But they, we don't help ourselves because we're so fucking adverse to other game modes. But I'm not... If somebody goes, oh, I want to play PvE in this game, I say, well, there's fucking, like, six wings. There's, like, what, a total of 30 bosses almost. It's like a weekly reset. There's challenge modes. I'll still big up the game mode. I might come in here and fucking say Resident Sleeper just as a big meme. But if somebody genuinely asked me, I would still say the fractals are challenging. You know, it's almost like a Mythic Plus, almost because you progress through. They get, you know, uh, instabilities, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's... It's just like, we don't help ourselves. And we really should. As a community, we should help ourselves to grow the game. And we don't. You know? yeah, no, I, I agree. I think uh, the, a, a, a lot of the communities are very self-destructive. And, well, I, I can tell you why they feel that way. I mean, I, it, it, again, just to preface this, this is, I don't, don't agree with this. But they, they, there's a lot of feeling um, because of, like the, I suppose, the scarce development resources that seem to be present. It's very much a zero-sum game. Like They believe that if... if um, if other game modes like PvP, World vs. World, or raids get extra development, okay, then um, they will it will be detracted from their own game mode. Right now, that, mm. that that's to a certain extent that will be true, like, obviously, but but not at its current pace. Okay, like Tournament of Legends is not going to delay Living Living World, for example. That, that that is not a that, thing. I don't know why anyone would think that. Right? That is all, it's not <laughs> even delaying fucking alliances. It, there's, there's no way. It's like I said. It's a recycled yeah. thing. It's literally yeah. like turning the fucking server back on. It's that easy. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like of course it is. Uh, well, maybe not that easy. But you know, it, there's no server really, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, there, there's whatever. Dude. There seems to be this misapprehension that the, 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 the mere existence of something for a game mode is already detracting from something else like that you know uh, it, you know like it, it just came out of nowhere they, they believe it's like ah ping, ping you know it came out of it came out of everywhere it came out of nowhere like wow this pvp thing but you know what we delayed your living story for that one buddy like no guys that's not how it works right that's obviously not how it works um uh, but yeah that there is certainly that kind of feeling um about the community but also okay now again like this is oh, the, the, okay guys th there are times where i I feel like this sort of mentality is 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 beatable and can be combated. But other times, I'm not gonna lie. Like what I'm about to say is one of the reasons why I just think like, why the fuck do I even try? Like um, a lot of players, um, like more casual players, the toxic casual players, genuinely believe that um, people like uh, people like Sin, people like me, Jaw, Val, and most of the guys in chat, for example, almost certainly, um, are very toxic and are going to ruin their community, right, okay? And yeah, that, that's, that it is what it is, right, okay? And, and like, I mean, at that point, like, how do you, I mean, how do you argue with someone like that who's gonna write you off just because you play a competitive game mode, for example? Like, how, how do you even, begin to have a discussion with, with with a person like that and and the trouble is is it because of the way the guild wars 2 community is like in a way um it's been marketed to to people like that okay it's been marketed to the casual community right and with that is the kind of distaste for anything even remotely competitive okay and by competitive i, I actually mean raids as well like raids in, in a lot of players minds are very competitive because there is that dps race boon uptime healing output uh mechanic you know um pressure 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 knowing how to use your class yeah yeah win, you know win or fail you know <laughs> a anything with a fail state is considered very competitive right okay um yeah. and as a result of that you know if, if, if I interact with that person, how can I convince them, right, that, that uh, you know, don't worry, we can coexist, right, you know, uh, uh, it's great, you know, you can go ahead, you know, hell, I love, I think the open world maps are great in this game, they're certainly a lot of fun, love playing through them when they come out um, with, the, with the living story, it's a lot of fun, I enjoy the story, it's pretty good, right, uh, but, like, how, how do I convince someone that, that we aren't toxic and we're not scary, right? And like, to be fair, maybe the community doesn't do the best job. Like if you go in PVP, you know, I've seen things, okay? And and certainly, you know, people don't like me very much in PVP because I play the other game modes. But, you know, still, um, <laughs> still, and, hey, that that's that's true. And it's, it's certainly true in, 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 in World vs. World as well. Uh, but 
it is what it is, right? Uh, it, it, that that sort of animosity between the game modes is really bad, I think, and the community does really shoot itself oh. in the foot there. But yeah, um, there there is a lot of hostility towards uh, towards PvP, right? Like, there's and there's also a lot of like you know your, bad coverage as well, right? Yeah, you know your statement about like how do you convince those people, right? How do you convince those people to you know try the game modes or to improve or like not to see the toxicity in it, right? So this kind of reminds me of something that Sinduna experienced. Uh, he sent me a link to. I don't know. I can't remember if it was in this Discord or maybe it was during my stream. Mm, uh, yeah, it was private message. Was it private message? Mm. Uh, long story short, there was a uh, fuck. Actually, you tell it. You you you, you experienced it, but it, it cracked me are, up. And are it you does talking about me... the guy who hated uh, hardware? He, he said he wanted to. He wanted to ban people or report. No, oh, okay, report yeah. people. Well, yeah. it was all about. Um... I tried to give a necro tip uh, about how to kite and go on YouTube and look up no, non-port spots in Guild Wars 2 so you can sit there and not get ported by classes who will spike you. Uh, and the guy went like, uh, I, I, I think that's unfair. I, I, I report everyone who go, don't, go to hard places or... Yeah. Was it teapot? No. <laughs> Whoa! What are you trying to say here, buddy? <laughs> so someone genuinely was reporting players because... Dude, I'm reporting people who running at wall slash hard places, etc. Because yeah. it's unfair. People that were using no port spots, people that were using terrain to jump around, he was reporting them, genuinely reporting them because he couldn't keep oh, up with them and he couldn't, he couldn't understand that concept. Disgusting. That is, that's that's kind of what you're competing with when you're trying to like explain elitism, but it's part of the game. It's part of PvP. Like this guy literally was not even worth. He wouldn't even go to YouTube. I thought it was, I was like, no, there's no way. That's somebody trolling you. Somebody who's genuinely like stream snipe your game and then you've just by chance I mean, I been baited and so whispering them. He was, he was like, no, this is legit. It, it was, it was just, oh, it, I was like, this can't be real, but it is unfortunately. So it's, I mean, do you, do you experience that kind of level of stupidity? Uh, I mean, uh, special, uh, <sighs> I don't even want to go there. Ah, uh, Arena Net Partnership. Do you ex do you experience that kind of thing while you're uh, in PVE raiding? Like, is that the kind of thing that you get while? Do you get that any? Does that community like crossover happen at all, or is it is it just us like that experience that kind of? Uh... No, uh, of, of, <laughs> yeah, of, of course not. In fact, I, I would I would argue that it's far more prevalent in 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 uh, in the PVE game mode for sure. Actually, uh, it, it, yeah, like there's a, a lot more people who who think that raids are are toxic and that basically pl wanting to play a good class like the biggest thing in raids right is um one is, is the, the the very idea that some players might want to play with someone who's good right is considered offensive right like suppose suppose i i said you know what guys i want to do a really nice wing one right i want to do high dps one healer uh everyone's in berserker gear we're doing crazy dps right okay now to some, the, the even the concept of that is offensive to them and shouldn't exist within Guild Wars 2, right? Okay, I think that's vaguely analogous to, say, uh, abusing a lot of the uh, the jumping pulses in PvP, right? And the, the very concept of that is offensive. So, so yes. And that that's quite a prevalent thought. I think we, we've uh, we've strayed. We've strayed a little bit from, from the conversation. I think that, that you know, this... <laughs> Is this Wasn't it game modes we were talking yeah. about? Game modes. <laughs> this has gone a little bit out of control, and I, I'm, and I am conscious that that Cinder is on a bit of a. He's on a tight schedule. Okay, so we've got to wrap this up now. We've got to wrap this up. Do we? Oh, have... he's, he he said nine o'clock, right? Or yeah, it's it's, it's nine eighteen for him. Remember time zones? Oh yeah, shit, time zones. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, okay, so do we, do we? I live in the future. Yeah. Do we? Do we have? Any, <laughs> any, yeah. We, we've slightly digressed a little bit. Now we're just roasting the community. I'm ready for the dislikes, guys. Be sure to say mean things about Jor in the comments, guys. Okay. Yeah. Just just blame it on me, dude. Yeah. I'm the one that's like fucking that's saying it. Or just Jor's say mirage. Fault. Just say yeah. Jor mirage. mirage. Like yeah. Come on, me, dude. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're safe. But uh, but, yeah. but anyway, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, friendliest MMO community, by the way, guys. Uh, but I wonder anyway, how many people will make a response video on this. Do 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 we have anything else to say about PvP? I think we've kind of, we kind of nailed it all down. Honestly, it's all been discussed. Anything else? Remove dead eye. <laughs> remove dead eye. Okay, and Jaws says remove Mirage. Right, so we've got the. I don't. I don't want Mirage there. removed. I like. I like the concept of Mirage because it's it's unique to MMO to any any game. Right, the whole concept of how they've designed that class is great. But they've given it too much. They just got to turn it down. It's that simple. I like it, but I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. I think uh, you know we can kind of wrap up the tea time there, guys. So thanks for watching, and it's time to 
you know, explain who we are in case you haven't known by now. And honestly, you need to know us by name uh, so you can say really mean things about us on the internet some way, you know, and, and tell us how wrong we are. So, our magnificent guests, guys, let's go through this, okay? We have finally has arrived with the face reveal and the chest reveal as well, guys, okay? <laughs> it is. It's Sin. It's Sindrida. What do you do these days? Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, okay, at the end of the show. Um, well, I'm a... Uh ex uh, ESL slash Pro League player. Uh, I still stream PvP um, and I try to uh, comment everything I do uh, and help people understand how to play the game. All right. Node isn't life. What? Node isn't life. Yeah, Node isn't life. He's so adept with steel that he steals my viewers when he goes live. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, then. Okay. On the right-hand side of the screen, with some kind of weird papega with extra hair, okay? A true mirror of his true personality. It is yeah. the Mirage main, Georges. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's not the first time I've been here. It's probably not going to be the last time unless everybody hates on me in the, uh, the comments. But I'll be sure to be there to defend myself, uh, as I always do, because everyone thinks I'm literally a papega, which is why I have... Uh, this. There we go. Nice. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Teapot with Twitch Prime, obviously. Get it free if you hook up your Twitch with Amazon Prime. Uh, I've just experienced the subpocalypse. I've just lost Ooh. a lot of subs, so be sure to hand those to, uh, to Teapot just to make up for that, <laughs> because I don't know how that works, but that's kind of my logic, apparently, because I'm a chimp. Um, yeah, I got nothing else to say, dude. I, I, cast, I cast ATs, I cast the MAT. I tried the MCT monthly community tournament. We didn't have enough people. Maybe February, maybe we'll do that. But uh, we'll see how that develops. Maybe people will actually sign up this month. I don't know. But okay, that's that's all I got to say, dude. All right. I think if you create a tournament with uh, better rewards, people will join. Yeah. Get, get, I'm limited, dude. I, I got get, arena net. Get the community to gems, sponsor like, your yeah, tournament. Get some In-game items, gold, legendaries, whatever. We'll see. Ask. Ask Cellafrag to hook you up. He will easily hook you up. He's got that 10k gold, man. 10k gold He's, he's giving it all away, dude. Yeah. He's not going to have any fucking gold left. He's yeah. literally giving away 10k. So. Well, make a bunch of all accounts, win the giveaway, and then give it away in your tournament. Easy. Simple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Easy. He's actually going to do that now, guys, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And finally, <laughs> okay, finally, it is Valen. Okay, he is... His IQ is so high that some of us have been, there have been more question marks in the chat than I have ever seen before. Okay, the true debate god. Six years of thief experience, okay, stealing your IQ and adding it to his own, adding it to his own, okay. It's Valen. What's up, what if, he's streaming all the time, what's going on? What's up with that? Yeah, so I'm probably the most elitist role player Ooh. in Guild Wars 2. Uh... By the way, I mean, I used to be number one AP, but I, I'm, I'm trying to save up my content, right? You know, I'm running out of content, so I'm just saving that up for now. We'll get one again. Uh, but I, I make, a, what is it? I'm doing like fashion tournaments now. I'm doing the Lidl Tea Time, and I also sometimes do uh, PvP. But that's a dead game mode, right, Reddit? So uh, you can find me on uh, YouTube at... I think it's like B to the Rye or something. It's it's on my Twitch. Just go to my Twitch and you'll have links there. And that's it. All right. There you go. Of course, be sure to follow and subscribe on Twitch and catch them all live, guys. All these fine, very, very fine gentlemen here today. You can see links the bot has been posted in there below the stream as well. They're all fantastic guests. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this tea time. It's been it's been one hell of a ride, guys. Like the journey of the tea time has been truly fantastic. And of course, you know, if you want to do these every week, mostly, unless it's really dead, okay, unless the game is truly dead, then we don't because there's nothing to talk about. But you can see all of the true pillars and faces of the Guild Wars 2 community here, sometimes, mostly, okay, often, okay, so follow, subscribe, okay, do all that stuff, give me that Twitch Prime, guys, okay, you know, if you've got Twitch Prime right now, look, I'm seeing a few of those, those white crowns in chat, like, come on, if you haven't got the, the sub icon next to you, what are you doing, seriously? Uh, you're, They've already used their subs on Ninja, dude. Yeah. What? Ninja? Come on, we should get Ninja to play Guild Wars Cena. That would really sort the game out, man, actually. That would really, that would be good, actually. But yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream.
Click all the links, follow, subscribe, follow on Twitter, subscribe on Twitch, on YouTube, etc, etc, etc. Just do all that good stuff, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and yeah, we'll see you later. We'll see you later, guys. Have a good, fantastic evening. All right, there we go.